Welcome to Stage Crunchy The Milk. If you have any questions or comments, we have multiple ways we can be reached. Around? That is one of the ways. Twitter is, of course, the best way for those of you that need instant gratification in this millennial-based world. And, of course, the show's Twitter feed is at Skimpod. That's S-K-I-M-P-O-D. For the more patient amongst you, which is none of us, let's be honest, the email address for the show is podcast at stayscrunchyandmilk.com. Crunchy again, being spelled with a K. We're also available via Apple Podcast, something I've never heard of. Stitcher Radio. Are any of you still using that shit? TuneIn Radio. Whatever the fuck that is, I, I couldn't tell you. Google Play. I've heard of that. I don't use it, but if you do, thank you. Spotify. Now that one I use, so find us on there. I know we're on there. And of course, at the website, stayscrunchymilk.com. Now I ask that you please rate, review, subscribe, and share the show, because honestly, I don't do that shit. And I need someone to pick up my slack. Now, I hear that there is a group of people here that collectively discuss music, and they provide for you, yes you, a pod call cast. It's a musical discussion show built on a hip-hop foundation, which seems to be what makes the musical world turn these days. And I hear it's pretty swell. Our personal Twitters are Tatum216, Lunchbox2099, The Real ODP, and your host... Internet's Tasty Tayrell 713. I woke up in the morning, hopped on the train, and saw my man, he had an L in his hand. Hide it from the beast, at least I catch a buzz before I hit my block. I take a mega hit, perform it on the good ship, lollipop, move the hop, so I can put the hip in the grip. Everybody slips so I can take a trip to the dip, dig a deep, a whole microphone control with the soul. Look at my hot eyes and tell me, how could I be cold? I'm coming to you from the underground. With thunder sound, number one question, yo, how can I be down? But I'll tell you, bring your lighter and roll your finger. Back up on your lighter so you, so you see the fire finger. Go from left to right, then front to back. Herbal verbals let us give the mic contact. React whenever I keep the head scoping. Ah, uh, don't front. You know I got you open. Duck down, don't front. You know I got you open. It's the original head beating the original crooks. Uh, I love that song. And it's Barry White Love Orchestra sample. But hello, and welcome to it. Stay Stretchy Milk, episode 398. And we're never going to survive unless we get a little crazy. I'm joined with my best friends. It's Tatum216. Hello. And it's Lunchbox2099. And Callie's here right now, all up in my face. And she's about to get tossed out like Jazzy Jeff. All up on the Summer ah! Jam screen. <laughs> <laughs> the real ODP, ODB, forgive me. Is uh is, is is no it is ODP. Why do I have ODB written down? <laughs> it's, uh, he's one it, dirty bendejo. Oh. Is 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 is, uh, is, out, is out tonight. So uh, tis with the teams. But we have but up in this piece again, and it's also the good. Oh, uh, we lost an episode, so I'm not even gonna bother. You don't get a three ninety seven. Three ninety seven is lost to the to the annals of history. Annals, annals of history. Annals of history will be holding. It could be up in the in the annals. Yeah, an- Ain't no was mentioned in that episode, so <laughs> at, at like, least during that call, for show, sure, for show. Sure. I don't that, even remember all that we talked about it, other than my grandmother dying. Well, uh, uh, yeah, what the hell? I don't, bro. Again, I, lost. I know, lost. I'm not, lost I'm not time. trying to bring it all up. <laughs> I, I guess for for future reference, for those listening, in case I ever make a reference to this, uh, my other grandmother passed away two weeks ago, so uh, you know. There might that might come up at some point in the future. So now you're filled in. I've been in bereavement for the last like two weeks. There we I go. Feel like for a let's good make some funny. How about just in, in for a good chunk of 2021? It's oh just, yeah, yeah. The last three months have sucked ass. There you go. It's okay. But uh, yeah, let's uh make <laughs> lady, and... lady at work at yesterday was like, "Oh, how you been?" And I was like, "Uh, both my grandmothers died and my cat died. <laughs> so it kind of sucks right now." And she's like, oh, "I'm sorry." I'm like, "Yeah." But I got my COVID shot, so at least I got that going for me. <laughs> Happens to the best of us, you know? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. What the hell's been going on with y'all, man? Just in general, let's, let, let me just play catch up, because, I, I, again, it's been some busy times in, 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 in life. Without, without giving away too much of what you would give away in your segment of the show, just in general, how are you both? <laughs> pretty, pretty good. Um, 
my son uh, graduated from kindergarten today. Yeah, I, 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 I saw that on both you and your partner's uh, IGs. Yeah, I saw the Naruto poses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I thought he was doing the ice in his vein pose. I was like, oh, that's gangsta as fuck, man. <laughs> I, I, I wish he was doing it. <laughs> but yeah, he was doing his... Um, he's been watching uh, Lego Ninjago. Okay, okay. I hear it. Um, I, I love that the martial arts is always just a part of a childhood. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We all, we all end up picking it's, it's kung fu, it's ninjutsu, it is it is karate, it's something, you know, it's every time. Man, did you guys speaking of that, did you see the teaser trailer for the fourth season of Cobra Kai? I did. Watch it. I, I, they, the guys are kind of funny did a uh, a, a watch along cuz they was clowning. They was like, "Why are we going to watch the 20 second have a watch along to a 20 second trailer because we just want to." And I like that it was hilarious to me. So, uh what is it? What is his name? Johnny Silver? What is this dude's name? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, check that motherfucker out. The way they they ran that trailer though made him seem like such a fucking badass, like kind of like like a Final Fantasy Resident Evil final boss or something. <laughs> I will have to, I'll have to watch that um that trailer. I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's, it's only like twenty twenty five seconds or something like that. I saw it on Twitter this morning. Yeah, but they also do a a, a, a logo reveal for the next season. And uh, it's probably not coming out. It's, well, well, it'll probably come out later this year. I think it's said Q4 is when it, uh, it'll it'll drop. So if you fuck a Cobra Kai, that is what's up. This yeah. was not th- this was not on the story uh, board, but I, I uh, the Jazz had to ban players from from, from, from talking wild reckless to John ja Moran's dad. I literally just saw that two minutes ago. Like I, said, I was that- looking. I saw it on Twitter. Yeah, I, I just happened to uh, open up ESPN to see the, get the score of the. Uh, yeah, oh, and then the fan in Philly got his season tickets revoked for throwing popcorn on uh, Russell Westbrook. Yeah. And then New York got a fan called out for spitting on Trey Young. And all, yeah, he all, got all, banned too. Yeah. All that shit happened yesterday. I mean... <laughs> People have been locked up for a year and a half, and now they're out here fucking wilding. That is wilding. Like, I guess so. That is terrible. Like, that's just like... I don't know. I already don't like uh, doing, <laughs> really going to events with a lot of people. But damn, man, what? what why? That that is it. That makes no sense. Not a popcorn, eh? But spitting on a nigga, come on, man. Spitting on me is a uh, is tantamount to. I, it's you've asked me to whoop your ass at that point, or at least yeah, you see you in the streets. Asked. Well, I mean, technically, it's assault. Yeah. Well, yeah, it is. Like it's like it's an it's actual bio, crime. It's a biohazardous assault. Yeah, he could actually be arrested for that, but they probably wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? Uh they should. Fuck that. Yes, shit. they they certainly should. I mean, and not only that. Like, I remember when I used to be a soccer referee. If you spit at somebody on the ground, you had to kick him out of the game. Mm-hmm. I remember that. It's like it's big in the Russian community. And like, <laughs> don't if that happens, you gotta, you gotta, uh, you gotta. Uh, Jump in there right away. I was like, eh, I'm, were there, were there a lot of Russian youth soccer players there in America? Yeah, it had to be. They mentioned it. I mean, <laughs> this is like, watch out for him. Was this like that American show? They're like sleeper cells or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, the Americans. Oh yeah, yeah the Americans. I never, I never watched it, but I've heard. Same, about but I'm it. aware of it. God damn, Miami getting their ass just stomped. <laughs> getting their ass whooped on in some street hoops. <laughs> yes. Sorry, Somebody Jimmy Somebody better, better go over there and tell Jimmy Butler to pick up the sticks. Yeah. Buckets, what is you doing, bruv? But, yeah. That's that's all I was trying to do. I was just trying to get a quick little, you know, score update. Dag, man. I, I didn't expect to come across all this nonsense. Hey, we won tonight. Good, good. Back, back to our winning ways. Did the White Sox play tonight? And if they did, did they lose? Chicago is still playing, and they are tied one up. I haven't been keeping up on baseball. Um, I mean, not only because I don't care, but just I just haven't. Oddly enough, this season has been uh, one I've given a little more focus to baseball on because that dude in uh, in uh, the Angels who plays in the outfield and plays and pitches mm-hmm. is amazing, and. Uh, so I've been just kind of keeping an eye on that, and uh, it, seems, it seems like of baseball the might be the most fairest game when it comes to a lot of shit. Like, 
you don't got to be a certain size to play. Yeah, it's always been some chubby men, some big men out there playing that. Like, if you, like, uh, you don't got to hit. Oh, you can just throw the ball there, brother. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's always, it's always seemed like, oh, and your friend want to uh, hit the ball for you? Yeah, go ahead. That's cool. Well, the the thing about this dude, this Japanese cat, man, they oh. said he the first dude to be doing it like he doing it since Babe Ruth did it. It's, he is a he is a he is a once a century player. He's like you know Brendan Fraser in the Scout. Oh, okay, <laughs> he out here throwing a hundred. He's hitting the like you know four hundred foot home runs. Yeah. He, can, he can play every position. Probably he, he crazy. A, that's dope. <laughs> like I was um, it was a picture of um a Babe Ruth on some article I was reading, and I and it was weird um that like um he had, it was either a fake beard. Or he had a beard just like uh, like a chance strap beard on, and I was like, "What context is this picture in?" Like y'all <laughs> y'all couldn't explain why the fuck Babe Ruth got hair on his chin in this picture and nothing else. Made no sense. I saw they showed some picture of him actually in color from the time period, mm-hmm. and it was like Babe Ruth clearly Dominican, y'all. What is y'all even doing? He is so he is so he is so brown skinned and clearly so. But yeah. I'm like, yeah, what is, what, come on, y'all. Y'all just gonna wonder, pretend. To- so, so it, I wonder how many. I mean, I know it, it has it has to be a lot. Like, I'm just gonna go say celebrities. I wonder how many celebrities or known people from that time period were passing. It was passing. Yeah. Where is that? I'm. I'm what you call that? Posted. Uh, of course, my man uh, from uh, Dizzy Zamero. Cause he was like, "Come on, bro!" You know what I'm saying? Cause you know he he's a super duper uh, Yanks fan. Yeah. So it's like I was like, "Damn, that dude is definitely <laughs> he's something." He got a wide nose and everything, bro. I'm just I'm telling you, man. It's it's like I wish if you, you find if it. you look at his face, he's at bare minimum like uh, Polynesian or something. He do got a yeah. Polynesian nose. That, that that he he is he ain't. Yeah, my man. And like. Joy. Babe doesn't sound like a white person's name. I'll be honest. <laughs> well, his, name jo- his name was George Herman Ruth. <laughs> yeah, but like, where did babe. babe come from? <laughs> he was out there pimping them hoes. Oh shit! Come. Yeah, yeah. Here it is. This, this, this uh, I was up. I'm gonna see if I can go. Uh, Grab a link. Chat. Like, like yeah. if you tell me his real name George Herman Ruth, then I'm like, okay, that's a white guy. But if you just tell me, oh, that's Babe Ruth, I go, oh, like yeah, like he's like Dominican or something. Yeah. You catch this, uh... It's Jorge Hermain. Ruth. This, this, this photo was taken a year before he died. Copy link. So, yeah, like they whitewashed his name so he fit more in. A lot of people, a lot of people were, were, were passing during that period of time. So I, I just I just sent it to y'all. If y'all if you open up the the chat, you should be able to click it. Yeah, he do look like an old ass black man. <laughs> he looked like, like, like my he looked like I'm my not, neighbor, Mister Green. I'm dead. I'm dead serious, man. He looks so much like my grandpa in that picture. That's kind of wild to me. And you know, the older you know, when you black, the older you get, the bigger your hats get. <laughs> <laughs> Is it that Babe Ruth? I mean, that uh, Barry Bonds syndrome? Uh, Barry, I mean, you can name a whole bunch of uh, different black men. Of, is, that's just the thing. You get a, you start wearing bigger and bigger hats. You start off with a baseball cap, you're wearing it. And you, the hats go over your eyes before you before you pass. A lot of older black dudes I, I knew, like, get, like from my previous jobs and stuff, they had, like, the yellow eye thing going on. Uh, old cheese eyes? Yeah, like kind of like the Michael Jordan thing. Yeah. I never asked them about their hats, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like every, every motherfucker they were trying to get that, that is a uh, that I got working on our uh, our logos is 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 is, com- com- is conversating tonight. So <laughs> for for you the listeners, uh, it'll be well actually by the time when you on this very episode if you just look in the corner of your application right now assuming this has occurred you will see our the our our pride logo because uh i was talking to a friend of mine and uh who who was talking about that they bought their kid 
an outfit for pride and they kid hated it. And uh, I was like, ah, fuck, we we need a pride logo. And I, and I, and and it's because June is a pride month. I was like, we need to get a pride logo. That that is what literally got me going on it. So I talked to the original guy who made our logo, and he did something initially, and I was like, ah, none of us were happy with it. <laughs> and I, I said, then I responded and told him what 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 we wanted from it, and didn't hear back from him. So I was like. Fair enough. I guess I, my man ain't uh, working on this shit, or was, or is not thinking of whatever. So I jumped on Fiverr and uh, found a found an individual. I don't know their their how they identify. So an individual and uh, sent him my sent him our logo, and he was like, uh, "They, I don't know. Again, I gotta I gotta be good about that." Was like, "Let me say you something. One, you don't have a logo. You have an illustration. You, I'm like." You are absolutely correct. That is a factual statement you've made. And uh, that is something I need to think about going forward. He actually said, you need a logo. And I'm like, you're right about that too. Because <laughs> the logo is a little, it works a little easier. And probably works better on shirts and stuff. So finally, you're like, look, I can't, I can't, I can't work with what you got. So here instead, I'm going to give you something, I'm going to give you something different. And I was like, okay, let's see what you got. And they, uh. Tossed a, 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 an updated version of Pride logo. I was like, oh, okay, I'm feeling that. But I'm like, but we're missing uh, something that makes our logo special. And that, that is the a small, I don't want to get that away. You know what I'm saying? But if you know, you know. But what's miss, what was missing was missing. And I, I informed them and, and we informed them and, they, were, and they, they added it. But they added it just like it is on the current, on the current image. And I was like, nah, don't do that. Put it up there. So it's like a little bit like it's present, but it's hidden. And they were like, yo, that's really dope. And I go, thank you. I, the, 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 my my co-founder came up with that idea some years back, and I just want to respect it. And uh, they were very like taken aback. I, I, I will read you exactly what they said, Aunt, because I thought it was so nice. Oh. Uh, great. I'll send you the other files. I like the concept how only a few people in Redacted or who work with you might be able to notice it. And I was like, yeah, word up. That's why we do that. <laughs> well, I'm glad they, they appreciated um, our artistic visions. Yeah. You see, can you see that? No, you can't. No. I, will, I will just... Uh... It's like, like LeVar Burton. But you don't have to take my word for it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, did I tell y'all I tried to get my kids to watch that? And it was like, I don't want to watch this shit. And I got so mad at them. Oh man, you should have fucking Ninjago'd them. <laughs> <laughs> if only I knew what Ninjago was, Daniel. <laughs> you know more about it than I do, I think. <laughs> no, 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 I don't. <laughs> we both know it's a show. We both know it's ninjas on the show. I didn't even know it was a show. I thought it was like a short for le- selling some Legos. <laughs> See, you... And there yet again, <laughs> you, your deep thought shows that you know more about the job. Than you I just did. told me it's a show. I didn't know that. But is it really a show or is it just a, a way to sell more Legos like you just said? <laughs> Well, isn't that what all Lego movies and shows are? I mean, there were tons of there were tons of Ninjago sets for years before they decided, hey, let's make a a movie and a show. So I mean, Ninja- I think I, I think I did watch the movie. It was the second Lego movie. Yeah, like, I so, think I watched it on like HBO or something. Yeah, yeah. See, yet again, you 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 know more than you um than you think you do. Have you ever watched the other Lego movies, like the the main ones? I tried to watch the first one. Um, like, I, I don't know. I, I, I just couldn't. I, I didn't get into it. Then I tried to watch the second one, and I think I succeeded in that one. I, I saw I saw the first one in theaters, but it wasn't weird because I was with my buddy and his kids. So it wasn't like a grown-ass man just in the theater watching Lego Movie by himself. Yeah. I didn't think and it then, was weird until you, until you just pointed out, this isn't weird. I mean, like, you know... I guess like this day and age is is it's more accepted than it was like if our parents did it. Mm-hmm. But um then I watched the the second one, the sequel like on HBO at home. Yeah, I liked um Tiffany Haddish in that movie. I don't think I've seen the sequel. I've only seen the first one. And I hadn't seen the Batman one. So I can't call it the the Lord and Miller are the guys who did that first one. I think half of them is who ended up doing a uh, uh Spider-Verse. 
Yeah. <clears throat> and so, uh, some, they, you know, similar animation technique and so forth. And I'm like, I love Spider-Verse. Like, so much. Spider-Verse is so goddamn good, man. So, I, I, I dig that that animation in general. Mm-hmm. Those dudes work. And, and uh, that, that one we just was talking about on uh, Netflix. The Hulu uh, one? The Mordok? No, the Millers versus the... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. That versus the Robots. Movie. Yeah, mm. yeah. I want to say one of them. Yeah, like yeah, Miller, like like Lord and Miller. Because the, the half of that is the Miller of that Lord and Miller. So that's a good uh, example. If you haven't seen that on Netflix, uh, you know, Family versus Robots, pretty great. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you uh, start the Modoc show? Uh, uh-uh, I haven't checked it out yet. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, my son, my oldest son, wanted to watch that. Um, I was like, I don't know. I I, I probably should check it out first before I say yeah. But knowing him, he probably watched it already. He just didn't say shit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll just keep that tucked up. You know what I'm saying? Keep this. I'm gonna keep this tucked in here. <laughs> yeah, like oh he, he's God. really crazy about um, watching um, the Nickelodeon shows right now that um, that Netflix have put up. Did you watch that uh, documentary? Oh yeah, yeah. I watched yeah, that. Man. I watched that um, a couple weeks back. Um, Not bad. No yeah, it's, it's really good because I'm like, I mean, uh, one of my favorite shows of all time is Pete and Pete. Um, that show was probably shaped the way I watch stuff now, or I mean, as I used to watch stuff because I don't really get to watch stuff, but <clears throat> like Pete and Pete got me ready for a movies like Pulp Fiction. Okay. Um, Pete and Pete had a lot more cameos on it than I initially realized because I hadn't yeah. seen the show in so long. And then there was like a like I, I saw like a video on Instagram. Like, I think it was from that like only 90s something account that I follow. And they had like a little like uh, compilation video up. And I was like, oh, shit, all these people were on Pete and Pete. Yeah. Were they were they known at the time? Yeah, so like, like definitely yeah. this is a famous cameo. It was like I was too young to realize that they were yeah. like famous, but now that I'm older and I look at it back on it, I go, oh shit, yeah, they were famous. Okay, yeah, like um, I knew. Let me see. It. So I'm gonna see if I can find a list while you're uh, giving your speech. No, well, no, I was about <laughs> to say I knew like one person and then um ag- then uh, agree with you, like it was some of the people I knew and I was like. As I got older, because I had bought some of the um, the DVDs and like watching one, I was like, "Oh yeah, that's fucking Iggy Pop." Oh, dude, that's dope. That's a that's a solid get. All right, yeah, Janine Garofalo, J.K. Simmons, yeah, LL Cool J, Steve Buscemi, Iggy Pop, Sid Straw, Vincent Pastor, Selma Blair, Michael Stipe. Chris Michael Elliott. Stipe, Michael Stipe from Stipe. R.E.M. <laughs> I'm used to Stipe, the MMA fighter. Yeah, Chris Elliott. Is Debbie his name Harry. Not Stipe either? His name is Stipe? It's Stipe. Huh. Stipe Miocic or whatever. Right on. See, just like Ninjago, Lunch knows more than he wants to let on. I'm telling you. <laughs> well, he's from, that, that's, that's, that was from Cleveland. Like, I, you know, I hear his name pronounced around here all the time. Uh, Debbie Harry. Mm-hmm. Wow. James Rebhorn, Gordon Gano, uh-huh. and David Johansson. Nope. Those last three I didn't know. I do know yeah. Debbie Harry, but I didn't know uh, the last three. And I see. think that was L.A. James, Claycorn. James Rebhorn is John McFlam, head of the international adult conspiracy. His plan is to rid the town of Artie, the strongest man in the world. <laughs> the kids of Wellsville are clearly in physical, psychological torment at the thought of a world without Artie. And then Artie left. <laughs> Gordon Gano of the Violent F- Femmes is Mr. Zank, who poses okay. complicated math questions about detergent to his class. And David Johansson of the New York Dolls is a forest ranger who gets very upset with how fast Don Wrigley is driving through the National Forest. Quote, I'm going to be looking out for you, he warns. And so will all the plants and rocks and birds and bugs and things. <laughs> so listen, those, those, are just fa- those are famous... Uh... Famous bands, so yeah. yeah people from the, but the thing is, is like the people he got were such gits because, like, who would think they would be on a kid show? None of these people would be on a kid show. 
Like, what 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 was Iggy Pop doing on a uh, show, a Saturday morning show? So like, you do y'all remember? Did y'all watch Tiny Toons? Or remember y'all? Was y'all? I'm. I don't know. I don't know what. Nah, no, I, I watched Tiny Toons. I watched Tiny Toons so, as well. Tiny Toons eventually, at some point, did a musical episode, and all the music was from a band called They Might Be Giants. Yeah. Super famous band nowadays, and people are aware. I just and my buddy and I and a buddy I knew in high school because I, I watched Tiny Toons like I was in high school when I watched Tiny Toons. He knew that he knew they might be giants, but most motherfuckers was not just pulling, but they might be giants. But of course, Tiny Toons pulls they might be giants, and it's like, and I'm like, that's mage at, for what if you know they might be giants, but for everybody else, mm-mm. so I, I, I find it interesting that these shows around the same time were pulling like such <laughs> interesting musical acts to come on their shows. So maybe they just had connects or or fam or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But I kind of I, I I get down with it. I respect it, man. Like I'm I'm so upset right now. Pete and Pete, the DVD is eighty dollars now on Amazon. I mean, is it not on like a? It's not on nothing. Paramount Plus. Is it not? I, I don't know. I don't have Paramount Plus. Yeah, I, I do. So let me dig in there and let me see. I will tell you if it's on there and. It, it the critic complete series. It stinks. It stinks. Can you imagine being immortalized on the internet like like this? You know, as a kid, just you and some other like some dude that you're working with hugging up on you, and like this is what comes up when people Google you for the rest <laughs> of your life. <laughs> yeah, I'm Danny Tamborelli, and this is some other weird ginger kid hugging my neck. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I'm sure he like um, you know that's what people what else was he in people could know him from that uh, probably uh, more than anything else Danny Tamborelli yeah I just know I know him as the voice of the sun in Grand Theft Auto 5 I know that oh, he yeah. used to do uh, that Nickelodeon figure it out show a bunch but he only got to do that show because he was Pete Oh yeah, shit! He was in the mighty, the first Mighty Ducks movie too. He was on all that. Uh, and he don't he, his Wikipedia doesn't even have a phonology in it. Well, because he was only in TV. <laughs> no, if, if he was only in TV, like it would be in there. It is apparently on Prime Video, but you, you have, have to, to pay it. for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he's got some shit on IMDb, but it's not very extensive. Man, like, that 90s Instagram account, though, really makes me feel nostalgic for, like, my childhood. Yeah. Like, they had the um, opening uh, video package for Salute Your Shorts on there the other day. I watched that shit like three times, like seeing like some of the like the foods and the the toys and all that shit just makes me wish I was a kid again. Hmm. I hate that I'm getting old. I think I just kind of accept it. I mean, I guess one has to, right? But <laughs> it's just kind of like, eh, what am I to like, do? But <laughs> like the the um, the kid from uh, Sandlot, the. Um, Hamilton the Bay Porter, the ginger freckle one that was mm-hmm. the catcher. He's on TikTok and uh, I follow him and <clears> like I, I, I had gone on TikTok for like a week and then I went on there randomly yesterday and uh, he had a TikTok up where it was like Gen Z trying to recognize current celebrities and like I was with him man. It's like I knew like almost the same ones he did and I didn't know like I didn't know probably 70% of what they showed. Uh, yeah, for for that, I, I, it is like uh, like like damn man, who are these people and what are they famous for? That's the thing. When you find out what they famous for, it kind of get it, it'll get you goat. Like, well, that's world famous TikToker. Yeah, that was literally one of them. Was like, oh, this person has the most followers on TikTok. There's some girl. I'm like, I don't know who the fuck that is. Yeah, I'm like sorry, sorry, buddy, I ain't built for that shit, man. Uh, eh, I don't feel like talking about news this week, y'all. Well, 
I mean, I do kind of got some, um, we, we, we missed a man. We'll get back to format next week. <laughs> I'm just kind of vibing. <laughs> well, I, I got, I got something I was thinking about, um, when I was, um, picking up my son from school the other day. <clears throat> I didn't realize he was back in school. Like, you know, uh, yeah, he, he's, uh, like for, um, it's only been, he was in school maybe two weeks. It's like the, uh, okay. like it was two weeks and then he graduated. Okay. Okay. So I was walking past, um, somebody's car in the parking lot because like, um, I actually like get out, like you usually parents just like, Hey, get out the car. Uh, I, I walk my kid like to the door every day. But I was um, walking past this person's car, and they had like a little "Don't Tread on Me" sticker on it. And I'm like, "Do I tell my kid <laughs> what this sticker is like? Sticker mean and stuff?" And I just started thinking, like, uh, "Man, so like I'm driving home, and like somebody in a car did something stupid." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, of course that car did something stupid. It got a big ass dent on the side of it." And then my brain just starts moving. I'm like, what other signs do you guys, because I have a couple more, but what signs do you say like, oh, yeah, I'm not, uh, no wonder you're doing stupid shit. This or this is on your car. <laughs> um, Maybe a coexist sticker. So, of course, you know what I'm saying? It's all the classics, the various. Uh, I saw, what did I see? So, I saw, I was behind a car the other day. They had a multitude of stickers. One said, Joe in the Hole 2020. Oh. I was like, oh, well, there we go. Of course, they did say, Blue Lives Matter. And then around his license plate, it said, Cops Lives Matter. And I was just like, okay, go. Well, I have not expect- seen that, but uh, yes, those are definitely big red flags. Yeah, for sure. That's for another sure, thing, sure. big flags. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, just in general, uh, large amounts of bumper stickers. You know what I'm saying? Of any yoke. Yeah. Not just saying some old whatever. When it's, when it's like, your car is literally covered in damn dash. Whenever you see that, there's always a coexist sticker in there somewhere. Sometimes. I, mayhaps. But I, I do. I, it's oftentimes it's like, what is, like, bruh. But you know, I guess you keeping that car. <laughs> well, like I say, coexist because whenever I see it, it's never alone. It's always <laughs> like on the back of a car that's like full of bumper stickers. There's always some crazy like it's it's like they're literally like taking like like a like a word bubble project from school and slapping it on the back of their fucking car. It's like coexist, and it's like um uh what's the the, the fish. <laughs> <laughs> you stole my Jesus fish. It's one yeah, of my the Jesus fish. Lines. It's, it's always coexist with the Jesus fish. <laughs> one time though, I did see like um a sh- the shocker. Oh what? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I thought that one. I thought, I thought that one was pretty sweet. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, but yeah, in, in, in general, like I said, as, as, as a driver, so today uh, is, I, I, I was all over creation because Vanessa had a, a doctor's appointment and, and right around, I was picking the kids up from school and then going to collect her and so forth. So I was like all over creation. I was just like, people who don't use their turn signal mm-hmm. are the absolute worst <laughs> and legitimately committing a crime, but it's not enough of a crime to give a fuck about, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I can't stand it. Illegal change, of course. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, that's, I, I don't think I've ever seen somebody use that to get pulled over. Unless they're trying to, you know, kill a black man. So can't call it. And, yeah, I, uh, I wouldn't know what that was unless I've been, I, I, I got pulled over for it before. But yeah. the thing was, so I was driving one day and um, it was nobody behind me. But like I had just left my mom's house and she gave me yeah. a bag full of grapefruits. And this is when I was driving a, a minivan. And when I stopped, the grapefruits rolled from all the way in the back <laughs> <laughs> under my, um, like, by my feet. Oh, for sure. On some old Final Destination shit. So, I like, I quickly uh, got over to the side and, like, I put on, I didn't put on the blinker. I put on my hazards. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
dude pulled me over. Like, I was already pulled over. He got behind me. It was like, it wrote me a ticket. I was like, I stopped myself. How can you put, how, you can't say you pulled me over when I stopped myself. Yeah. And he was like, well, that was a legal change of course. I'm like, I just, I just told you what happened. Like, you can see the grapefruits down here. Yeah. And then he was, and then I, like, I tried to fight it in court. They're like, um, fuck you, Anthony. That's, that's what happened. And oh I had to pay God. the ticket. That's why I didn't bother to trying to fight that that seatbelt ticket because I knew the courts were gonna like side with me. And then I'd just be out more money and I would have wasted a day off work. Yeah, life's a B and D U D. Oh yeah, so back to the list. Did you have any more lunch or um or tea? I mean, like I said, I, I, I told you like. Any, any, any motherfucker that's not not uh, not using the uh, turn signals or shit, it gets on my gets my go. And uh, I fucking hate it when they throw the turn signal on when they've already stopped. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's like f- thanks, buddy. <laughs> it's like yeah. uh, it's a bit late. Only it's only because, like I said, I'm a I'm a very aware driver, especially since the accident. You know what I'm saying I'm 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 on that shit. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, what are you about to do, car? I need to know what you're doing because you're kind of leaning. Are you gonna get in that other lane, or are you gonna stay in this lane with me, or are you just drunk? What's going on? Here? Yeah, <laughs> you know I, I noticed. Um, not, I think what the, it was one day I was driving, and it seemed like everybody was just like drifting to my lane. I'm like, what is y'all mm-hmm. doing? Like, yeah. I just, I just felt like um, people. Maybe it was because it was a Friday and everybody was just fucking drunk or something, but. <laughs> It was nah, uh, it was crazy. It just, I watched an, an accident in Lakewood the one time, right over there by the high school mm-hmm. on Franklin. There's that traffic light that uh, cuts like what is that like Warren or something? But uh, uh, no, that's that's Franklin and Bunts. It's right. What's that? Bunts, yeah. yeah. So it was like evening time, like sun was going down, and a lady must not have been able to see the traffic light heading west on Franklin. And she went into the intersection when it was her red light. Yeah. And she just got her front end just whacked. <laughs> a little further down the road, uh, at, uh, what is that street? Marlow, I think, is where some the the the, the somebody the woman literally got killed. She, oh no! They, they, whoever was coming down came through. Hit her so hard that she was ejected from her vehicle. Oh wow! And and just like yeah, she. I'm like God. Like I said, I got hit wild hard in the parking lot. I don't. People just don't be giving a fuck, bro. They just don't. And so uh, people don't realize like how much damage can be. Like you think like a, a car going 25 ain't that fast. Like one time I was backing up in the flats and I backed into the fucking fire hydrant because I couldn't see it. Yeah, I didn't know it was there. And like that that fucking whiplashed me and I was barely moving. Yeah. That's just, that like I said, this is yeah. It, I, I, when you sent that video about the the boat the other day, I was like, them people are probably really fucked up. Yeah, that you looked, can see how hard they shifted. You know what I'm saying? That looked super wild. That that whole that whole boat was, you know, moving with the motion of the ocean. Yeah. The thing that the thing about that video that like tripped me out was the fact that like it went full speed into the good time, mm-hmm. and then as soon as it hit the good time, it bounced off and then went full speed away from the good time like there was no stoppage it was just like boom all right we go in reverse just as fast as we came in i I was wondering was that just physics or did my motherfucker finally figure it out and if you finally figured it out what took you so long yeah yeah i I, I was wondering like why didn't you do that to begin with it was just like or just turn it's like it's just he had so much time before he got there and I was like, <laughs> oh, I'm going to hit you. I'm going to hit you. Uh. <laughs> it's like, see, and that, that that's the thing, too, that makes me appreciate camera phones. Because I think sometimes people could be a little too much on the camera phone. Mm-hmm. But, like, without the camera phone, we would have never saw that boat hit that other boat like that. Yeah. No. We may never even have heard about it. Like, it might not have even have made the news. But just because some random ass person was standing there on that pier. Just like looking out and thought maybe thought this tiki boat's looking real cool. Let me take a video of that. True. Then whack. <laughs> yeah, all, all this boat cam footage out here um, from this boat on boat crime got to stop. 
I forgot the the Nautica Queen was even a thing. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I ain't thought about the various boats of the Cuyahoga River in a very long time. Again, 2020, they took a whole year from us people, and uh, I'm getting old. Sometimes a nigga just like, I don't know, bro. Yeah, some boats used, down there. <laughs> I used to go down to the pier all the time to play Pokemon Go. Uh, yes. And and on Fridays, the good time would do like the the white parties. Yeah. And yeah. It was always ninety nine percent black people and like one percent white people. It's always it was always a uh, interesting. I tell you, well, I remember at Van- when Vanessa's dad got married for you know them two weeks or whatever. He all alone. He stayed married. <laughs> we was on that boat right, and we was pulling up, pulling back up on the pier, and the dude Vanessa's sister was dating said. He said something like, "Oh, it's about to get. It's getting dark in here." And I was like, "This uh. nigga just said this shit to my face," and I had to be like, "Yeah, I, I fully understand what you're saying." I just walked away from his punk ass because I was like, "Oh, because I'm like, I'm like, you you forgot what you you forgot who you was around." Didn't oh you? yeah, that's terrible. And, and, uh, yeah. and like her 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 uh, Vanessa's sister's friend was like, "I don't think he meant it that way because he a Mexican dude." Oh, and I'm like, "Bro, I'm gonna let you know, man. I don't. I, it ain't. He meant it that way." <laughs> I don't care what the fuck you saying to me, yo, bro. I know what my nigga, but what my man was saying, and I was like, you forgot who the fuck you was talking to, didn't you, bro? Uh, so I, I was never circle, cool, with buddy. That. I was never cool with that motherfucker again, and was quite happy when uh when Vanessa's sister and him broke up. Like this motherfucker right here, boy, you get your life fucked up. I'll fuck up the side of this boat. <laughs> well, like, so those those uh, boat trips though, like they made me assume it was more of a, a black person thing uh, like the, the quote-unquote white party yeah because i saw a lot of like because i was down there like a couple weekends like it wasn't yeah, just, just like on there regular enough to play pokemon Go. Yeah, yeah and like those when those like the boat would go do its round yeah they would come back and then like they'd all depart like deboard but then a whole nother group would go on so i saw like every weekend like a, like a parties of black people going up on that boat all in dress and all white and everything like yeah. And I never even heard of a white party until I saw that shit. And then, like, I saw some of it on "quote unquote" black Twitter. Yeah, like people talking about white parties. Like, I'd never heard of it before that. Oh, not "quote unquote." Black Twitter is a real thing, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. I was driving um, my car the other day after I dropped off my son, and it was a bunch of UPS trucks. And it, of course, oh shit! I just hit the mic. UPS trucks are brown. <laughs> And then it was like this one white minivan, like in the middle of these five, uh, <laughs> these five UPS trucks. And I was like, I, I love that because I know exactly what you're you saying. You said me in real life. Yeah, I was like, oh man, I wish I could, I could like, uh, if I wasn't driving, I wish I could take that picture right now. A dude showed me one time what he did at a McDonald's where he put Sprite in one cup and Coca Cola and five other ones, <laughs> and he showed he showed me the picture without any context. And he's like, do you understand this? And I looked at it. I was like, hell yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I remember back when I was on Facebook and I was in the Black Out Tips Facebook group and somebody posted basically a version of that meme. And, and I laughed. I put the little, little laugh face. And this woman had a fit about that. Why is this so funny? Tell me why you laughing. Call by my name. You know, we use, you use real, your real names in there and shit. And I'm like... I, one, I'm never, I'm not explaining myself to nobody because I, I, I found that shit amusing. But I'm like, why is you so mad about it? She's been like, in a gangbang before. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it may have, bro. I can't call it. It's like that shit was, uh, it's, 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 it's dumb and it's a, uh, it's a dumb meme. And uh, I mean, even if like you haven't even seen that type of porn before, you've seen those memes before. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw one the other day where they used it. But the the five dudes were like the different cryptocurrencies. <laughs> I think I screen capped it, but I'm not I'm I'm not sure. I have to dig it up. I'll, I'll have to send you this video. It was a video of this guy sitting on the ground, right? And then on um, he was sitting in front of like a garage door, and it said um, exp- this. It said um, explain a Bitcoin on the garage door. So the garage door was open maybe a, like two inches. And he slid a dollar under there. And then he got a stack of money. And then he's like, oh, okay. Then he slid another dollar under there. They sent him more money under it. And then he sent another dollar. They gave him like 
a whole carton of cigarettes. He's like, and then he put another dollar under there, and they gave him like some gold chain and some money. Then he's like, oh. Then he put all the all the you know all the different stuff he had accumulated under the garage door, and then they closed the garage door. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! The internet provides. It does, bro. I, I just I, put some, I I I enjoy it. I put some respect on it. All right, so I guess um, that's the end of my segment uh, segment concerning car warning signs. Um, <laughs> and like you, you pretty much uh, covered um, everything except one um, and white cars. Usually those are rental cars, so I usually yeah. try to stay away from them. Uh, I, I I I can I, I can hear that. You know, okay, so that is the thing. That is the vibe. That that, that is something I do. Out of state license plates. Yes. Just in general, they 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 oftentimes don't know the the rules regulations of of the road, and you'd be like, bro, why is you going at at at, at, at fifty five in this in this clearly marked sixty? And I mean, I realize it's that, that five miles probably don't make a difference to you, but it feel like I'm crawling at that point. And sometimes it's like motherfuckers just want to ride. Also, people who ride in batches. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, why is y'all all driving in a group? Get the fuck away from each other. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I constantly, I, I speed up and drive away. Like I said, I, I get out on the highway, especially if I'm doing road trips. I just play shake and bake with, with, with a fellow driver, and we usually just go at it, man. That's just, I'm like, No. I'm avoiding all y'all because I want to be as far away from y'all as possible just in case somebody slip up or move or do something. You know what I'm saying? I am clear of any potential uh, of whatever. We've been watching these uh, damn Fast and Furious movies in uh, so preparation uh, for, 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 movie? for Fast 9. And uh, we just watched uh, Too Fast, Too Furious the other day. <laughs> too Fast. <laughs> too Fast for y'all, man. And then uh, it's, in that movie, it's a, car, it's, a, it's a car that goes between two semis and ends up getting crushed underneath a semi. And it's just like, yeah, that's just, no. I, all it does make me remind me of why I drive like I drive. And I'm saying, like, I'm trying to be safe and, and away from that shit. And like I said, I will always give a truck its a, its a due. Like, you you serve, you do what you got to do, and uh, I will move on. I will, I will gladly push on from you. We're going to go to Pittsburgh next weekend uh, just to go uh, look some shit at Ikea, take the kids, and just go bullshit around uh, in, around that general area. Xander is all, uh, although, I, although he didn't tell me this, he told my partner this, he is not looking forward to it. But I'm still going to make his ass go. Like, oh, he, wow. Like, it's just getting to the point where I know it's my, my, my time with my, my, my son is, is shorter and shorter as, the, as days go by because he is he's just getting growner and growner, you know what I'm saying? He about to start his he about to start his senior year and, and, and so forth, and I know what it's gonna be, so I'm just trying to have as much of him as I can while I can. And so I'm just like, yeah, I'm still I'm dragging your ass to Pittsburgh. I don't even give a key coming anyway, little boy. <laughs> well I I think it'll be nice. Yeah, I've been really, really, I really want to um, take a trip to IKEA. Like, I want to, yeah. um, I want to get one of those um, filters, the air, the air purifiers they have. That's only like, okay. um, they're only like fifty bucks. Um, it's a couple um, knives that they won't ship. Um, that I want from there. Well, I mean, Alex, I mean, I realize you want to go get them, but yeah, I'll, I'll be I'll, there. Next, I'll be there next week. So if you're trying to, you know what I'm saying, I can gladly. Uh, Pick up anything you need. No, I, I want to take a trip there. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I think I might be able. To, I might be going um, taking a trip by myself there, but we'll see. Okay, you gonna go to one of Columbus? You gonna go to Pittsburgh? You go to Detroit? I'm thinking. Uh, Currently, I'm, I'm. The only reason I'm not going to Detroit is they still got a COVID issue in the Michigan that is just will not seem to let up. So. Hmm. Well, maybe I, I maybe I will do uh, maybe I will do Pittsburgh. Maybe we'll do that as a family. Pittsburgh in general. Yeah. I'll just go to IKEA by myself. Yeah. And um, because so. uh, shit, don't nobody want no uh, no uh, <laughs> no COVID problems. And um, you know, Columbus was like the the hotbed of um, of COVID for us. So you know, yeah. maybe I, I would avoid that too. But I don't know. They they say we vaccinated, but are we? Uh, half of half of adults in America are vaccinated, but still half is not. So, 
I can't call it. You know what I'm saying? My whole house is at this point at least had, well, I mean, my youngest is the only one who have had, has only had one shot so far, but the rest of us is vaccinated. But like, but as it turns out, like I said, you can still get, carry, and give motherfuckers COVID. Yeah. Even if, even after having been vaccinated, it just keeps you from dying. But that don't mean the next man can't. And so I just, I'm saying I'm doing my part. I would, we, I would have been to fucking Chipotle today with Vanessa. Mm-hmm. And this bitch in there with no mask on. And she turned around looking at everybody else in here. Yeah. We all masked up. And I mean everybody else but her mask on. Yeah, that 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 And exact she kept thing looking happened. at us like we was crazy. I'm just like, no, lady. You are. We all kind of know the deal. It's cool. Great. They didn't say they didn't they do nothing to you, yell at you, or kick you out the store or anything like that there. But you the wrong one there in that, in that particular outing. Cause I know Tuesday, I know I know Tuesday, no Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever the second is. I know that's when all the fucking uh, the COVID shit falls. You know what I'm saying in the great state of Ohio. But uh, as as I said, it's not enough. In my opinion, it's not enough people have that have been vaccinated. And I get it. I, I, I in theory I am safe, but again, my partner is still uh, has an autoimmune disorder. They don't know the full of how that of would will affect her, could affect her. And people like her, so I'm like, fuck it, I rock a mask. Yeah, I don't I, mind. Yeah, I'm. Um, I don't know. Like it, and this isn't my words. This is the CDC <laughs> words. They say, in in large groups, indoors, you still supposed to wear a mask. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I'm just gonna keep on wearing a mask. Yeah. Yeah, and that's and that's fine by me. So I don't, I don't, I don't, even, I don't even trip. <laughs> so speaking of masks, I had a question for you, Daniel. Me and T talked about it a little bit. Um, it was either yesterday or the day before yesterday. I bought some orange bitters. Okay. Have do you have any bitters? No, he does not. T brought some <laughs> over when we did the. Drink that was the old fashioned, or something did like I a year bring, and a half ago. Did I bring bitters over? Yeah, huh. we because we used the Buffalo Trace I had, and we made like uh, old fashioned or something. You brought over bitters and I think some cherries or something, and then I think then you took them home. <laughs> did anybody no, no, my, bitters at my house and, that I don't know about? <laughs> no, no, my brother, you got to get your own. <laughs> I'm, or like I remember you brought over like the grenadine syrup or something. Yeah, but I'm I, again. That's not here in my house. So if if, uh-uh. if if I brought it over, that shit at your crib somewhere still. I mean, unless you put it in the mini fridge downstairs and it got buried or something. Anything is possible, sir. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I that I kind of do remember. Do we use them? The- that was actually I think the last time we recorded together. Huh. Man. That, yeah, we got to get that set up. I keep saying that, and then uh, it is two episodes away from that. Let me look at this damn calendar. <laughs> As I do showbiz on the line, that is 99. That is 400. So wait a minute, 99. So this one comes out on the 3rd. And so um, we will be recording 99 on the 3rd. And so... That will come out on the tenth, and so four hundred would come out on the seventeenth, and then Aunt's birthday is the thirteenth. What you know for your birthday? Uh, I know you. I'm not trying to make you record a show on your birthday, yeah, but I'm just asking. Is the, my bir- my birthday is on Sunday, right? Yeah. Um, it ain't no telling. Like, um, you know, it'll probably be. It, I'll probably be do some doing something. And then like. When is when is Emory's birthday? Emory's birthday like right around there too, ain't it? Thirteen on the twenty sixth. Okay, so it's a couple weeks later. Yeah. All right, maybe the twelfth <laughs> is what I would ask y'all to maybe consider as the day we get together and do some shit in person. That is all I can ask. <laughs> if your if your twelfth is open and you ain't like out of town or doing some shit for your your birthday, man. I'm gonna say was twelfth is the, is the Saturday. Yeah. I'm gonna say yeah, I probably will be doing something because um, it'll probably be like one day with my mother and one day um, one day here. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's my brother's birthday too. You so think it's your brother's birthday? I well, him and my sister are both kind of in that area. Mm-hmm. So like, I forget always who's who, 
But like, I just assume that somebody's gonna do something for their birthday around then. But I don't know anything of as of right now. Does your sister or brother know anything about bitters? Uh, my sister might. My little brother, no. How, At least I would hope he's, not. He uh, he's going to uh, what's um uh, Saint Ignatius. I'm sure you yeah. need to get him um get him prepared for the summer. I'm sure he's gonna be making lots of um, old fashions in a little while. Did I tell you guys what he told me about what the kids at school said to him? No, you did. No, you were you were talking about it. Uh, oh, at the set, but I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get the full. Uh... Okay, so when I when I had him over here to spend the night that night, uh, fuck, like a month or month and a half ago now, like I don't know, it was sometime in the last like six weeks. Um, I took him to the movies and had him spend the night over here. But, like, when I picked him up and, like, we were driving to the movies, he was talking to me about um, how he had sent some joke to these two girls from school (laughs) and how they told him they were going to cancel him (laughs) and that he wasn't allowed to be offended because he was a hetero white male. That's funny. And I was just like, what in the fuck? It's like they talking like a cartoon at that point. Yeah, I'm just like, you guys are, you're not even in high school yet. Like, you're about to be, and like, this is how you fucking kids are talking to each other? We're gonna cancel you. <laughs> He's like, you got big tits, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, this is the kind of bitching and crying I gotta hear about from my friends on this shit. Like, and then now these, like, middle school kids are saying this shit to each other? The world is changing rapidly. Hey, you told me something pretty interesting. Um, you said that. He didn't like the Brussels sprouts you made. Oh, I was so... And he put hot sauce on the steak. I was fucking furious. So, when you told me that, I kind of had a theory about, like, vegetables. Follow me here. Go with me. Vegetables are kind of like masturbation a little bit. Eat them three, four times a day? But the thing is, when you're younger, (laughs) heck no, I don't eat vegetables. Heck no, I don't masturbate. No, I don't do that. You don't catch me jerking off. (laughs) (laughs) But when you get older, man, hell yeah, I eat some Brussels sprouts. Man, I ate Brussels sprouts the last two days. How many of those days did you masturbate? Both of them for the last two days. <laughs> did, did the day end in Y? No. <laughs> oh my god! I swear, like I just thought of, uh, when you told me that uh, it, it was just funny. I'm like, um, yeah, it's kind of like eating best. Like, no, I don't eat broccoli. I'm a man. I think the first time I ever watched porn with a group of people was when I was like, okay, it's it's cool to admit that I'd be jerking off all the time. It was like that. That that ripped the bandaid off. <laughs> I don't. I don't think I've like not in a like a a watch the whole thing way watching an adult movie with a, like with other people before. So like it wasn't like a massive like orgy jerk session thing. <laughs> it was just, it was just a bunch of people who lived in the same apartment having it on the living room TV and kind of like discussing it. It was more artistic than anything. Oh. So, but it was also kind of courage wolfy in nature where it was just like, who's going to be the first one to object that we're doing this? <laughs> so I, I can, in my head, it's like, now you see these these four brown UPS trucks over here? Now watch this, <laughs> this one minivan over here. Well, those kind of movies, I don't think were on Cinemax. Oh, but maybe it's God. gotten more progressive, you know, since the last time I saw it. Probably not. Uh, I, I, I remember I was, I was I, I, like, who knows how this party could have turned out, but T was uh, young and blind to what, what, I guess, the potential. I remember... Wh- Don't get canceled. Being, being at a chick's house. No, I was at I was at I was at Dayton's chick. We went to a friend of hers house, and 
they put on uh, an, an adult movie, and I, I was sitting there, I was like, this is very uncomfortable, because I don't know where, what is going on here at all. And you see, uh, she got to turn it off, and I'm like, <coughs> and now, now I look back at this so many years later, I'm like, what could have been? Like, What should have been? Like, hey, hey, I've I never had a boner before, what do I do? <laughs> 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 what, what I think what's what's crazy um, to me is is like most of that stuff bypassed me in my life because like I went from from high school to pretty much doing what I'm doing now. <laughs> like I never really had time to be like like you know my mother was pretty strict. It wasn't like if I went to a party, it was definitely during the day. <laughs> It was just like, oh, we going to such and such party, and I'll be home by the time the streetlights come on. <laughs> then, <laughs> you know, when I got older, it was just like, I have a full-time job. No, I can't go to this party. <laughs> uh, like, um, and, you know, my other friends were in college, like, far away. So, I didn't really get to um, have that, um, those those kind of parties where it was just like, Something could go down at this party. Yeah. I got lucky, I think, in that my social anxiety just naturally kept me away from shit like that. Bruh, I tell people all the time, the the the, the having been raised in the church fucked up my whole mindset when it came to sex for a very long time. And yes, I, I add that to social anxiety. It's just like I was the fact that I managed to to, 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 to work it out eventually is amazing. <laughs> Cause Brad- I, had to exp- I had explained this to my group of friends the other day because like the brown schedule was coming out yeah and i just like talked told them about like you know my social anxiety stuff and then like the brown schedule came out i was all like oh man i want to go to this game i want to go to this game i want to go to this game and my one buddy's like i thought you said that you have social anxiety you don't like going to a big crowd and shit and i go here here's what it is a lot of shit that I'm on the fence about that's in those, that falls in those kind of categories, I just won't fucking go. Like I'll like I'll mentally if it's a if I'm iffy, then it's a no. But if it's a big thing that I really want to go to, like say like the Browns are open to see this coming season in Kansas City. Yeah. I want to go to that game. So I told him, I'm like, here's what'll happen. I'll make all the preparations, I'll get the tickets, I'll, I'll do all the planning, and then it's like I'll go to Kansas City. But the whole time, like, I'll be excited up until, like, the day before. And then when the day before it starts about to happen, then it's like my brain's going to flick over to, like, why are you doing this? You shouldn't go. It's a bad idea. Like, you don't know who's all going to be there. You don't know what could happen. And then I'm going to be, like, fucking just, like, trying to think of reasons to not go to the game. Like, even the morning of the game, I'm going to wake up and, like, try and talk myself out of it mentally. So then I'm going to have to force myself to go follow through with everything I planned. And then, initially, and then eventually what will happen is more than likely I will go through the thing, I'll enjoy it, and then when I'll, I'll come out on the other side being thankful that I forced myself to do it. But it's a fucking battle mentally to get myself there. Oh, yeah. yeah. You try, you're trying to go to Kansas City, you holler at your man. My mama lived there, so uh, you know. She's in KCK uh, as opposed to KC Mo. So <laughs> Right now, my, my plan is to go to Kansas City for the Browns uh, season opener in Kansas City. When, like, when is that? There's a handful of us that it's like December 12th. I, th- I mean, September 12th, I think. Maybe the – don't quote me on that. I can look it up real quick, though. But, uh, yeah, like there's a handful of us that have already said that we want to go. Yeah. So a few days after T's birthday and right before yours. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, they're sandwiched there in the, in the midst of. Yeah, September 12th, 4.25 p.m. We will have a discussion about those matters. <laughs> See what you're talking about. Yeah, because like I will gla- I, I will gladly go see my mama <laughs> and drag you yeah, along like, with me. <laughs> yeah, like I was thinking about like driving and shit, because you know, um like like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, like my grandmother passed away. So like I was on bereavement leave. Now like I'm not obviously, you know, I'm not happy about my grandmother passing away because you know, she was the lady who raised me and she was like my mom's alive, but my grandmother was like my mom growing up. So um but, like, through our, our work, whenever you have an immediate family member pass away, like, we get an entire five days of bereavement leave. So, 
both of my grandmothers have passed away this year, so I've had two weeks of essentially free vacation. Like, like not free in that, like, you know, I had to lose my grandmother to get it, but, you know, I had two weeks of vacation that, like, didn't count against my normal PTO allotment. So we're, we're pro- rapidly approaching the halfway point of the year, and I still have almost an entire four weeks worth of vacation. Yeah. Like, if you count my sick time, I have over four weeks worth of vacation still. And, like, the year's almost halfway over. So, like, football season comes up. I have plenty of time to take, like, a drive trip to Kansas City and back for a couple days. Or, like, me and a couple buddies are talking about going to the Green Bay game uh, on Christmas. I just want you to bring me back some KC Masterpiece chips, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I could probably make that happen. Oh, I appreciate it. Because like I, I want, I like, I would like to drive for a couple reasons. One, right now, I have all this COVID weight on me, and I don't feel like I'd be comfortable on an airplane. I'd have to lose weight before I'd feel comfortable doing that again. Uh, two, um, I like to drive to places like when I have a destination in mind, and uh, like it's like a part of the country I haven't seen much of or haven't seen at all. And, like, I haven't – I've only been through that area one time, and that was me driving through the darkness yeah. coming home to Cleveland. So it's like I haven't really, like, experienced that stuff in the day. So, like, I, I you know, necessarily wouldn't mind doing, like, a little Midwest road trip for a couple of days and seeing that kind of stuff. Um, you take just like- plus, and then I have all the time to use. And, like, I have this car that, like, has no mileage on it because I ain't been driving it. <laughs> I tell you, just like I told uh, Gabe's sister, or just like I told uh, uh, Vanessa, uh, uh, the pod sister, eh? don't sleep on the world's largest truck stop. It's kind of amazing. Bucky's? <laughs> it's in Iowa. So if you come, if you oh that one, I watched a YouTube video on that. Yeah. I tell you to, I wa- that I would, one, I would and tell then you to Bucky's hit, in Texas. I would tell you to hit it on the way back as opposed to on the way there because you can just yeah, out of Kansas City, you can just hook it up and go through Iowa, and then drop back down and keep it moving. <laughs> So. That's the thing. Like, if if I had a couple days off and you know, like time to kill, that's yeah. the kind of shit that I wouldn't mind doing. Like, if it's it's only a little bit out of the way, yeah. I don't mind doing that kind of shit. How many lot lizards are on that uh, particular rest stop? I, I don't know. We, me and Vanessa, he got to it. Uh, kind of, it, it was in the evening, but it was amazing to go in there and see it. So, because like it wasn't, and, 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 and also time. as it turned. As it, as it turns out, there's like more to it than what we even saw. There's like a whole museum in there too, what? of like of truck of trucks and stuff. So it's like we only got to see like, you know, the big ass mall of truck shit. You know what I'm saying? It's basically like, oh, go buy some shit for your trucks. Oh, here, there's a truck wash here. Oh, here, I watch you a YouTube video where a dude went there and they have like like a doctor's office, a movie theater, showers. a restaurant. Like literally yeah. you can go buy you can go buy time in a shower and stuff like that. It's amazing. It's fucking amazing. And it literally has a big old sign that says "World's Largest Truck Stop," and I just thought it was dope. Yeah, so. I, I wonder. I wonder how much those showers are. I heard they cost like ten dollars. How good is a ten dollars shower? I mean, I guess I, depending on how long you've been on the road and how much you feel like you needed a shower, probably it could be well worth it. You know, any any at that point, any shower is worth the tenner. You know, <laughs> yeah, I think. I think that could be dope. I bet you that pressure yeah. got to be amazing for ten dollars, though. <laughs> <laughs> for ten dollars, I better have a nozzle on the top and the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> no, I better be on a poop in that shower for ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't want that big a hole beneath me in a shower situation. That's scary. <laughs> I, I guess. Well. No matter what size the hole is, if I'm paying ten dollars, I'm pooping in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny shit in the shower again. I mean, depending on how gross you want to get, you could break it up with your foot and just wash your foot back off. <laughs> I mean, right off top, I'm wearing flip flops when I get in there. Yeah, that seems like an athlete's foot sitch. Yeah, like, you got to wear some foot some footies. Yeah, I'm wearing I'm wearing some shower shoes definitely. <laughs> um, just in case I gotta fight my way out of there, one, <laughs> two. Uh, um, you know, just in case I, I um, you know, I gotta stump some poop down the drain. <laughs> oh shit, dude! I, I mean, you you point the shower nozzle in the right way. It's really at the end of the day just a giant bidet. That's true. My so my shower head 
broke a couple of months back. Just like uh, the 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 you know part the screws the 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 actual you know physical pipe mm-hmm. snapped. So I had to get a new one. So I was like, well, let's as always. It is quickly. Let me go to the wire cutter and see what they talking about. And they pointed out the the best shower head in their opinion. And so I, I bought that bitch and. It is amazing. <laughs> it truly is the best shower head ever. Cause I so it's, so it's got a big old shower head, probably a, about the size of a dinner plate. Oh wow! You know what I'm saying that just hits you with water, but it also has a, 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 a you can a, 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 an attachment. You can pull that bitch off, and the pressure that come off that attachment, bro. Yeah, man, that's that's what I'm talking about. That's what you want going down in your shower situation. So props to the wire cutter for always putting <clears> me on to the, the the things to buy. Cause that's my shower is 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 quite pleasant. <laughs> I'm, I'm tell you right now. So that's the move. So you don't got to do an old corkscrew. You can just go ahead and spray it out. Yeah, you can. Know I, I can literally grab it and point. <laughs> and like I said, it, that, with some high that's pressure. What I do with, that's what I've been doing for my shower head for like for the last like ten years. Yeah. I always got the one where I could remove it off the thing and, and hold it around and move it around. Yeah. Just because, like, I, I've always been a bigger dude, so trying to, like, move my body around to the stationary shower head, it just wasn't practical, yeah. you know? So I always wanted the handle one so I could make adjustments and get a little more free-flowing. I hear you. Yeah, yeah. And I, and like but I, I, have seen, I have seen a variation, though, like you're talking about, where it's, like, the the square stationary shower head up top, and then on, the like, the middle section mm-hmm. has the lift-off handle. Yeah. <clears throat> I can't, I, I've been watching, uh, well... One of the one of the things I treated myself with lately is uh, Discovery Plus. Discovery Plus, pound for pound, is the Mike Tyson of um, apps. I am, it is something I am paying for and have yet to use more. Than, I, I watched a couple of episodes of my man uh, Ron Funches. Ron Funches, John, and uh, have not have not watched more. I'm sorry to hear that, Terrence. But I have it. It is, it is there in my possession. And when it, when it, when something is, when, it, when something calls upon me, I am giving them the seven damn dollars. Yeah, I I watch it so much. Um, I watch. Um, what 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 made me think of it is Bath Crashers. Is where they like go to somebody's like they go to you know DIY or I guess what now is um, Home Depot. And I'm like, hey, man, is you buying stuff to fix your bathroom? Well, don't worry about it. I'll fix it for you. Yeah. And so I just I put the link in the chat. The one I got is the upgrade pick is what I went with for the shower. So not our pick, which is the one they picked. But I went for the upgrade. I'm currently avoiding using my bathroom sink again because I think uh, when we hooked up the new pipes, um, the back one, like, I don't know if I mentioned this when I talked about it. But the previous owner had puttied, the like, the previous pipe had like kind of rusted out a mm-hmm, lot, mm-hmm. and he and he plumber puttied the fuck out of that pipe to attach it to the main, uh, I don't know, I don't know what you call it, but the main pipe that like takes the water out. Yeah. And when we hooked it up, the new one, we like we just kind of flex sealed it, but we didn't like plumber putty the shit out of it. And the other day, my buddy went down to the basement to the basement bathroom and he come back up and he tells me that like it's all wet down there so i went downstairs and like uh water had dripped out down to the to the, the ceiling down there and it like soaked the shower mat down there mm-hmm. so like the ceiling has like some water damage so uh, i put a uh like a i don't want to call it like a uh a pause on using the bathroom sink up here yeah. until like I, I can get the shit like straight up fixed. But um what I was gonna bring up for like my portion of the, the shit uh the it shit. pertains to uh, for the show, you know. <laughs> um so like I talked about like my gutters needing repaired and last week um while I was out on bereavement leave the uh I had an appointment with the gutter company. Like, I made the appointment a couple of days before my grandmother passed. So, like, I was, like, a couple of days into grieving, and I had the appointment with the gutter guy. And um, what was fucked up was, like, I had planned to take a shower, and I was, like, just about to head to the shower, and he calls me, because I had an appointment for noon, right? And he calls me, like, an hour and a half, 
like earlier Ooh. than noon, and he goes, "Oh, hey, uh, my my other appointment ended early. You know, is it okay if I head to you? I'm like five minutes away." And I'm like, "Motherfucker!" <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> come on over. So I like had to go throw a shirt on. And I kind of like fixed my bed head up a little bit, so I was like, you know, slightly less miserable looking. And uh, so he came and he like looked at the the house and like the way my house is set up, I don't have gutters on the sides just the front and the back. So it's like about half as expensive to do my gutters as like some houses could be. And so um, they quoted me like 1100 bucks to change out the gutters and the downspouts on the house. And uh, he told me it'd be like two to three weeks before they'd come out to do the work. So I had to pay half of it up front as a deposit, which I did. Like, But the thing is, like, the lady called me like two days after he showed up. And he, he made it sound like she's going to call me that day. She called me like two days later. And I almost didn't pick up because when she called me, it came up as potential spam on my oh, cell phone. No. <laughs> yeah. So like when I picked up and she like told me who she was, I was like, oh, man, I almost didn't pick up. A, like, I told her, I'm like, you came up as potential spam. She goes, oh, man, we'll have to have that fixed. And I'm thinking, like, how the fuck do you get that fixed? You know, like. Is there, like, some sort of potential spam committee that you, like, appeal to? It's got to be. It's got to be somebody you can be like, hey, man, don't be putting me in the spam category. <laughs> yeah. So, like, he told me two to three weeks, and I'm thinking, okay, they'll probably be out here in, like, a month the way things are going out here in the world. Um, but then, like, the other day, I was sitting here. I, I, I came back to work this week, and um, it was, like, uh, Tuesday. And I'm working, and then, like, I get a call. Like, I, I've been picking up all the random numbers lately because, like, I've had, the like, the garage roof stuff in motion. Like, they've been, you know, he asked me about tiles and so like that, but that's just not done yet. So I pick up in case, like, it's someone from the roof company trying to call me. And then, like, I had the the lawn care people and then the, the gutter people. So, like, I've had all these random services coming out here to try and do house shit. So I started picking up all the random numbers because I don't have them all saved. Yeah. So this random ass number calls me on Tuesday morning around like noon ish, and he tells me he's the gutter guy, and he goes, "Oh well, my crew's finishing up a job right now. We could be at your house in about an hour to start, you know, the work on your gutters." And I'm like, "Okay," thinking that that was a lot faster than two to three weeks, but all right, sure. So um, he shows up, he drops off a trailer in the driveway, and then he like he leaves and. Uh, I guess to go get some people or something. They come back and like, it's funny when you hear just like random ass people outside your house, just like cussing at each other (laughs) and just saying all kind of crude shit that like, it's funny because I came to the door because they were talking about, they were trying to find a power outlet outside, even though I told like their boss that there was no power outlet outside my house. Yeah. So then like, I left the door cracked in case they needed to come up and ask me something. So, like, I, I keep hearing them try and figure out their power situation. So, I go to the door, and I'm like, how long of a, of a cord do you got? And then it was like, they went from being absolute shitheads to just, like, the most professional-sounding young men <laughs> instantaneously. <laughs> That's what you be, man. <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, and I'm thinking, like, I don't give a fuck that you guys are out here fucking just, ra- like, razzing on each other and shit. Like, I, I did that shit back in the day, too. But I'm like, but then in my mind, I'm like, fuck, I'm the old guy who owns the house now. I'm not the young dude outside just, like, saying, like, raunchy shit. So, um. Wreck this shit and kill uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up opening up the garage so they could run an extension cord from the garage because I didn't want, like, a cord running through the front door for or sure, anything. For sure. And uh, so they started working around, like, 2.45. And they were done by, like, 4.30. Nice. They completely tore off all my, my old gutters and put new ones on, new downspouts, everything, in, like, less than two hours. So I was I was quite surprised. And um, they did an R. I would say they cleaned up 95% of the shit that they tore off the house or, or, or left behind. So Because I went outside when they were done, and I did a quick little sweep around the yard and the driveway to make sure there was nothing laying around. I found some scrap metal in, like, the side of the driveway. But, um... So I picked all that shit up, you know, that because I don't want to be running over that shit. But uh, I'm eagerly anticipating this rainstorm we have coming tomorrow that's supposed to last, like, tomorrow and Saturday. Because I want to see if the what they did with the gutter work fixes the leak problem I've been having here in the living room. Yeah. 
Because then, if that's the case, then I'll consider that taken care of, and then I'm going to get the company to come in and fix the water damage from a couple months ago, so I can finally mark that off. And then, um, the more, like, the more I look in my bathroom, the more I hate it. So it's like, this thing with the sink is, like, a bit of a pain in the ass, and now, like, the bathtub's draining a little slow, and, like, the ceiling needs to be repainted because the, uh, the humidity in there has, like, peel, started peeling the ceiling. And the paint on the windowsill and the shower is, like, peeled off. And it's, like, the bathroom needs, like, a weekend of, like, TLC care. Yeah. So, like, that's kind of, like, on the forefront of my mind. But the funny thing about this gutter thing is, so, I like I said earlier that I paid half of it up front as a deposit. So I was thinking, like, okay, the work's done. <clears throat> I guess this lady from their office is going to call me again to authorize a second payment or something. Yeah. So then, like, a couple hours ago, I was playing Call of Duty right after work, and, like, I got an email. It was an invoice for the second half of the, the payment. Like, I had invoice number on it and shit. And in the email, there was a link to go to their website to pay it on their website. So I had to go on there and, like, type in, like, the invoice number, my information, all that shit, and then hand type in the amount that the, the email said that they were charging me. It was the most, like, professional, unprofessional form I'd ever filled out for such a, like, large purchase. But then it was a funny thing at the bottom of the, of the payment system where it said, please consider giving an additional 1% or 2% to help cover the convenience charge we'll incur for this form of payment processing. They wanted me <laughs> to figure out what 2% of my bill would be and then add that to my bill so that I could pay their credit card fees for processing the payment like that. And I went, hell no, I didn't do that shit. <laughs> if you wanted that, you should have included that in the price. Yes. I'm like, I just paid you 1100 bucks. You could pay the 2% out of the, off the credit card fee yourself. Like, thank you, sir. <laughs> Man, so I had that, the lawn care company come in and spray a couple weeks back, mm-hmm. right? And so um, the one thing that I will say about the, that that whole thing is so far the, the lawn, it worked. All right? All the weeds, for the, like I would say 98% of the weeds in the yard are gone. And they haven't come back. But the other thing I'll say is the fucking company that does it, is relentless with the goddamn email advertisements and the phone calls. It's like, I don't know how many more fucking times I got to tell you guys, I don't want you to come out and spray my yard for mosquitoes. I don't have mosquitoes in my yard. You're not getting fitting another 50 bucks out of me. Fuck off. <laughs> Just stick to the plan. Like, I literally, I took a phone call during Call of Duty last night because the guy's like, oh, well, I wanted to talk to you about our seasonal mosquito treatment. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm good, bro. Like, don't call here on that shit again. I'm trying to I'm trying to snipe people right now. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm glad uh, True Green Kim Law uh, it, 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 it sticks up to it. For for once upon a time back in the day, for about a week, I worked at Office Depot over there by Southland, which is now closed. But I uh, sold computers for a week. And I was very good at it. It's just I, I getting out there it was difficult on the bus, you know what I'm saying? Because I didn't have a car at that point in time. Which is why after a week, I was like, nah, I'm not doing this shit. <laughs> it's just not worth my time. But if anything, like I said, I, I have, it, it is a couple times in my life I've been an electronic salesman, and I'm, I'm very good at it. It's the one thing I can do, I, I know I can, I can actually do in this life. I can hustle electronics. And the dude, I was, it was in there buying a, buying a laptop. And uh, like I said, I, I, I got him so and so forth. But he was like, let me keep my car, man. Consider giving me a call, bro. I, I, think, I think you could probably, uh, you know, work for us. It was a guy from True, True Green Kim Law. And I never called him. And I want to say either he came back in the store or whatever. He was, but he was wild salty at me for not calling him about the potential job. I'm like, what kind of multi-level marketing bullshit was going on in your <laughs> ass? Man? Get the fuck off, bro. Like, I don't want this job I got, barely. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh my god, that was a, that was a sight to go back in that bitch and get that check. And after I, after I was like, nah, bro. After a week, I'm good. This is not for me. But <laughs> how many jobs have y'all just like like just like you know, deuced out on? Like, nah, that's not me. Uh, so my first job at Circus City, I just I no call no show my last shift. <laughs> my second job was a seasonal job, so that just had a natural expiration date on it baked in. 
My third job was a clerk at a gas station, and they sold the gas station to new owners. Okay. And so when that happened, I was just like, I, I'm out. Because I moved in with my mom anyway. Yeah. So, like, I moved away from over here into my mom. So, like, it, I I didn't have a car or anything yet. So, like, that job, like, it wasn't going to happen. So, like, I just kind of deuced out on that job. And then uh, I was at Goodwill for four years. And then they fired me. And now I'm at where I've been at for almost for over nine years now. Nice. Well, um, <clears throat> I got fired from... From Wendy's, um, and then I went to go work at another Wendy's for one night. <laughs> and what's crazy was the one night that, that my first night was the night I was supposed to go to prom or my prom night. But I was like, I don't want to go to prom. And I worked that one night, and then uh, my boss from my first Wendy's was like, You got another job at another Wendy's? Come back. And I, and I went back to my old job. And I never wait. So they fired you and then took you back. Yeah. How the fuck does that happen? I was a spectacular. I mean, come on, it's me, Dan. But you said you got fired. Yeah. So they have like they have like a a, a rehire policy of sorts. <laughs> like, were you like reformed or something? Like, uh, Usually, when you get fired from a place like like I wasn't allowed to go to that Goodwill that I worked at after they fired me. Oh well, well, it didn't work like that. He fired me, and I, he was like, he called me like, you son of a bitch, come back. And I, <laughs> and I went back to work in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got mad because he was like, you went to another Wendy's? I was like, I did, Matt Don. And he was like, come back. I was like, you got to give me more money. He was like, no, I fired you. <laughs> but yeah, he gave me my job back. And then um, I was uh, working for... USPS um, doing um, Amazon packages on the weekend. God, God damn right you and were. I quit. <laughs> I mean, I just did, like I just I did I didn't come back. I did, I did it, and I mean, <sighs> they paid a lot of money for to do that, but that shit was extremely difficult, <laughs> and. Like I remember, um, I did it. I did it like a couple weekends. I mean, I am certified to drive a mail truck. Like I am, like I got sworn in. Like I was in in for real, and um, it was like it was only a weekend job. And but then, like I did it the first weekend. It's like we we only go get these many packages, and I went through it. Shit was the most difficult job I've uh, like I ever had, and I worked at the post office before. And then the next, I went back the next weekend, and I had more stuff to deliver. And it was like, man, you got to get through that stuff faster. I'm like, what? And then like they, uh, <laughs> like the one of the guys who worked like in a similar neighborhood came to pick up some of the stuff, and um and you know, help me deliver some of it. I was like, you got to be kidding me. And this wasn't around no holiday. This wasn't around no uh, Father's Day coming up time. It was just like a regular ass season of the year. I was like, man, you got to be fucking kidding me. I can't do this. <laughs> and I, I like, I, it was, a no, I, I didn't never, I, no call, no show f- forever. I still get mail um, asking me why, why I ain't come back. <laughs> I've seen like UPS drivers like pull up to the house, jump out the side door because they drive with it open, throw throw the shit on the porch, take the quick little pick, and then they like run back to the truck and then buzz off. Like there's no like care. It's just like hustle, 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 hustle. But then it also weirds me out when I see Amazon packages get dropped off by like regular ass people in like their little mini SUV or something. I had Best Buy drop off uh, a package today. Let me go get it. Yeah, the like um I don't live far from my Amazon and now, now they drive Amazon trucks. But for that, you know, a couple years ago when they first started, and it was like a cutlass supreme in your yard. <laughs> you know. That shit still oh. happens. That's what I'm saying. Like the Amazon truck comes a lot, 
But there have been people that are like just regular ass people that do like because like Amazon has like third party courier shit where lo- like local it's almost like Uber Eats but for yeah. Amazon. So like you can sign up to go get like a parcel of packages and then go drop them off like like you're not technically an Amazon employee like you're like a contractor. Mm. So Best Buy has been doing some old home delivery themselves now. Basically, somebody come through in a geek truck van and drops some shit off. And like I had left already to go get the kids and then go get Vanessa. And Xander's like, <laughs> somebody rang the side doorbell and left and just left the package there. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Because he we we have to ring on our phones. He go, yeah, they just left it on the side of the house and just sure as shit, this, which is a steel book for Mass Effect uh, limited uh, the whatever the whatever uh, legendary edition. In a package, was laying in my goddamn driveway next to the side door, <laughs> and the dude took a picture of just that. I'm like, it's a whole front porch. Why would you not put the fucking package <laughs> on the front porch <laughs> and instead just lay this shit on my damn side? Like, I, I probably could have crushed over the car. It, yeah. Somebody could have just snatched that bitch up. Could have thought it was whatever. I'm like, everything. I'm like, oh my god, Best Buy. I found shit in my backyard before. You told me that, yeah, er- yeah, yeah. Like earlier this year, like. I didn't know my one buddy has sent me a Christmas gift because I found it in the middle of the backyard like a couple weeks after the he sent it. was probably playing with it and shit. Like, it's fun. <laughs> so, but like, yeah, with Best Buy, man, like depending on what you order and what time of the day, yeah. they might bring it to you same day. That's So I ordered uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition last week after w- waiting for some uh, Best Buy points to clear and they finally did. And I was like, fine, I'll buy it because I, I had like 10 bucks off. And uh, they were giving away that still the steel book for free if you bought the game. I'm glad that you mentioned uh, Best Buy points. I've been meaning to bring this up. Yeah. So Amazon has a um, a program called Amazon Shopper Panel, uh-huh. where um, they sometimes send you surveys, kind of like the Google ones, where the like, Google will send you like a little question. Mm-hmm, yeah. And then they also have it where if you upload. Like, if you take a picture of 10 receipts for the month, like, anywhere you shop, like, if you went to Giant Eagle or Sheets or Dollar General, anything, if you upload 10 sheets, like, take 10 pictures of receipts to the app, yeah. or if you um, email them, like, if you bought something and you got an emailed receipt, you can forward them the email, and if you do it 10 in a month, they give you a $10 Amazon uh, credit. Oh, because they basically, they, they keep a watch over the competition? Yeah, they're trying to data mine you through your receipts, but they're giving you $10 in Amazon bucks every month to do Ooh, it. Nice. Good Lord. Well, as for, oh, so, so Hustles, I've quit. So let's see. Um, my first actual job <coughs> was rallies over on Clark. And not the one that's there now. They closed the one that's there now. And that, and that is a, a, a Rite Aid, if I'm not mistaken now. And I quit that job after getting the next job. And I just didn't. I I just no call no showed, and uh and the lady was uh, the the lady who wasn't even the manager. She was the co manager, but she was we 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 was cool, and so she just kind of felt though. So I think some kind of way that I just like dipped on her. No call no showed her on, on her. Next job that I left that job for because it was paying like whatever. I, let's say I was making minimum wage, and and then the other job was paying five dollars an hour. I think is is whatever, and that was at a call center, and that was making phone calls for people to donate to the fraternal order of police. (laughs) But the reality of it is, is we was making money for the company because the percentage that actually went to the fraternal order of police was like wildly low. And if somebody asked you, you had to tell them this one time this dude asked, Oh, Hey, what's the percentage that goes to, uh, goes to the organization. And I was like, uh, 10%, I believe is what it was. And he went the fuck off on me. This, that is criminal. Blah, blah, blah. He was wild mad about it. Just like, whatever. Got fired from that job. Why did I get fired from that job? Well, I, uh, on my first check from that job, that job was like basically, uh, you know where Lady Jane's is at? In, over there on, uh, in Parma Heights of, what is that? That corner, corner of York and, uh, I don't know what the fuck that is. Yeah, in the in the plaza right there, yeah. uh, it's so, York and Pearl. Yeah, so back in that back in that area right there, it was a was a little call center and, uh, that I that this job was where I worked at. So you can imagine that place up to Super K. So I like my 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 check my first check from them. We went to Super. Me and my man uh, Tommy went to Super K, and I bought a pellet gun. Oh. 
And I took it to work and I was like super hyped to open it up and play with it. So when I had a break, I opened it up and was out in the back behind behind the uh, the place. We was just shooting cans while we was on break. And I was like, cool, man. This is dope. I bought a pellet gun. It works. It's kind of fly. And uh, the next morning, because we worked on Saturdays, <laughs> dude, dude brings it in. He goes, Hey man, you know your hours are in the sh- your 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 uh, basically your hourly is in the shitter. Even though that that day I'd had the best dad ever had as a salesperson, you know, saying I crushed it that day. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, so you know we got to let you go, and then rather was they let me go because because I because they 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 was like, oh you had a good out there in the back. I'm like, I didn't have a gun, <laughs> out there, good, bro. Get the fuck out of here, terrible. man. That's terrible. Yes, I got I got fired from that gig, and then like. uh like I say, what else? I worked at, I told you I worked at Office Depot. I worked at UPS. I worked at U- UPS, like you were saying, it's just, it's, it's, you work in a hot ass fucking it's factory warehouse. And what I did was unload. That's what I did. We unloaded UPS trucks that you see coming to your house every day, but we also unloaded the goddamn trailers. You unload them onto conveyor belts throughout the whole fucking thing. And it's a good job. It's a union job. They pay well. But that shit was hard as fuck to do. And after a while, I just like, I can't. And so I just, I, I just left that behind too. It was a good job. And uh, they, they, they and I left in good terms. And so I, if I needed to right now, I could go probably go back to UPS and they, they would rehire me probably to do some more Metro Unload. And I'm too old for that shit at this point. And then I worked at CSU Library off and on while I was going to CSU. And only when I went, basically because they, I, I could get a, uh, what the fuck is it called when you work, 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 study, whatever the fuck it is, you know what I'm saying? And because, you know what I'm saying, if you can't, if you can't, basically, basically the government basically pays my salary if when you worked at a, when you work at the school like that, you know what I'm saying? And when I wasn't in school, I wouldn't get no government money, so I couldn't work. So, couldn't do that. And then, so the last time I left CSU, again, I never graduated, so I was off and on to CSU forever. I went to a, uh, a, uh, <laughs> Temp agency called Adeco, <laughs> and Adeco was on the corner of uh, East Ninth and and Euclid in Cleveland, Ohio. It is now a Huntington Bank, but it, uh, that that the structure is still there. And Adeco put me where I'm at now as a temp, and I worked for nearly one year as a temp. And then, right around the time, right around this time, Microsoft was getting uh, lit up for having temps be temps forever. Basically, they just had forever temps. And the country was on like, you can't be doing it. That's some bullshit. That's fucked up to be having tips be over tips. So all of a sudden, they just started hiring all of us. And the woman I wanted to work for couldn't hire me quick enough. And so I ended up having to work for uh, one of my worst bosses I've ever had in my life. And uh, But I was hired in. So I was in the company that I work for right now at that point. So I was like, all I have to do is make it a year. Because after a year, you can you can you can sign out and go work for another department or whatever. I had to just make it through that fucking year, and that was the longest fucking year of my life. Because there was a lot of chaos at the company at that time. The lady who was the the boss at that point, J.K. Nobody liked her. Yeah, nobody liked her, and they didn't like her management style, and so forth and so on. And her underling is who I work for, and so that shit was. She was a well known <clears throat> piece of shit, and so forth. It was wild, man. Man, it was wild. that email. That she put out for herself leaving the company is still mm-hmm. one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Just imagine, like, you know, this lady, like, she all the stuff she wrote herself, and it's like, you know, I'm leaving, and like it was just like this blase fair picture of her, like with her big blonde hair, like sitting at a table, like with her, you know cutesy pose like with her fist under her chin it was it was one of the most funniest things i had ever seen in my life it disappeared wow, that makes me disappear yeah, yeah. okay so I was, I was trying to show you um i actually just hit my 10 receipts yeah because i realized um i honestly i had installed the app like a couple weeks ago and i forgot to do any of it and i'm talking about the amazon shopper panel thing um i'm just bringing it back to that real quick because um they sent me like a push notification earlier today where they're like, you got four days left to get your 10 receipts in for the month. So the thing is like you could take pictures of receipts, but you can also forward them email receipts. 
And so I literally, um, I've realized that like I had shit in my email that I had uh, deleted over the last like week. Like I had bought shit on Clash of Clans on Google Play. Mm-hmm. I had a couple Uber Eats receipts. I had my water bill. Like, so I just sent them all this shit, like, hoping it would work, and, like, it fucking worked, because I literally just went from four receipts to ten in the last five minutes. Like, they accepted, like, all the email ones, and then they got a bunch of them that they're reviewing. I've got the ten out of ten, and then my ten dollar reward is sitting there with the twenty-five dollars cent survey thing, so I got ten dollars and twenty-five cents in Amazon credit that's going to be deposited into my account in, like, a week. Fancy. But that's, that's just cool because, like, if I buy something on Amazon, I got Google Play for, like, I do, every month I always, like, Clash of Clans, the beginning of month, yeah. I always spend $5 to unlock the month pass, uh, the, all the unlockable shit. Yeah. I do that literally every month. So if that means I could forward the receipt from that that I was, was going to trash in my email anyway to Amazon and get a dollar back for it, like, that, that's fucking gravy. Yeah. Hell yeah. I, I fuck with it, man. Amazon is making it like they're they're certainly cornering the market on trying to get me to buy from them exclusively <laughs> because like I do like my grocery ordering from Whole Foods now because like it's super easy and convenient the shit's good and then I get Amazon rewards on top of it because I pay with an Amazon credit card. Nice. Now this like I literally can forward that fucking Whole Foods receipt to the Amazon and be like, look, I bought shit from you. <laughs> oh, you're gonna give me another dollar back? I had to go. So I bought my kid. They're going to be in March Band next year, and they are going to be playing. I thought they were going to be playing snare drum because that's what they did there of whatever uh, audition on. And uh, turns out they're on uh, bass drum, and so I had to. I had already bought drumsticks, but it was like, no, those are now the wrong sticks. So I had to buy the new drumsticks, and Amazon was like, oh, we'll have these in stock. You know, whatever. And I'm like, okay, no, I just need these goddamn drumsticks. And then so I went all over across the internet trying to find them. Nobody had them bitches in stock. And I was like, what's going on with the, the, the bass F4 drumsticks? But uh, 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 the Columbus Music Shop ended up having them. And I ordered from them and paid like a premium. We'll just say that uh, for the- them. But I, I, I got them ordered. So they'll be here sooner. So I, they shipped. So they'll probably be here like in a couple of days. Yeah, um, well, I know it, it probably, like, the, the the two music places near me didn't have them. Again, on the, at least the internet said they didn't have them. So Guitar Center didn't have them. The, the music stores didn't have them. No, yeah, nobody seemed to have them holes in stock. Can't call Damn it. it. I, truly, I can't. I'm like, what's going on in the realm of uh, musicianship that these, these things is missing? But, yeah, man, the job game has uh, been interesting to me. Oh, and at some point, when... Uh, but before my daughter was born, so like uh, when I, I when I knew I, I also I, I worked at Target and what I do at Target I sold electronics, and uh, I liked that job. But it was a uh, it was during the uh, the recession. Gas was wild expensive. And they was only paying me like you know whatever amount of hour, and it was way out in Avon. And I was like, after a while, it was like, look, I like this job. I like work for Target. I like my coworkers. I like my bosses. But I cannot justify the cost of, of wasting gas to come way out here to Avon to work for this amount of money an hour and so forth and so on. So I ended up quitting that job. But I, I quit that one legit. Gave my two weeks and everything, you know what I'm saying, and kept it moving. So I did. I, I, I have before in my life of gigs given a respectful two weeks notice. But uh, I like Target, man. If I, if I could uh, work at Target, and, and I would, I probably truly wouldn't mind, especially if I could work in electronics in Target. I, even to this day, if I'm in a Target... And like I need somebody, and so every now and again I have to push the button to like call somebody over. I know how to clear that, you know what I'm saying? And so I can like, okay, I see you now coming toward me. Let me clear this for you, so you're not getting <laughs> caught up. Because I, because I already know if you if it goes over sixty seconds, they go, you, it'll you can get in trouble for it. And I'm like, I'm never gonna play you like that. As long as I see you floating toward me here, I'll go ahead and clear it for you. No worries, you know what I'm saying? I, I still call people with, who are in target guests. Because that's how the, the the how that shit gets in your head. Because that's what they that's what they refer to them as their target guest. And so sometimes forth. I think back to like Goodwill when I used to know the different register combinations mm-hmm. to like clear shit and input shit. And I wonder like if I had to go back, like could I call any of it up from ten years ago? Yeah. I don't think I could 
But, like, who knows, man? Once I got on the keys, like, yeah, it might come back to me. It's like, that's, that's the fun part about it. Like, so I still know how to look up DCPIs, which is basically target uh, targets internal numbers for SKUs and shit. So if I'm looking for something, I can be like, oh, it's, it's this DCPI. I'll tell them that. You know what I'm saying? And they'd be like, how you know the lingo? Be probably worried that I'm a secret shopper or something. But it's like, nah, man, I just know the game because I was in the game. And uh, it's also the good <laughs> champ. When I uh, that. make my sandwiches, I still put a, a W on with mustard. <laughs> nice. That's the windy way. Yes. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> so I love it. I love it, man. I just, I don't know, man. I, I, I dig that, uh, how, how that goes down. So. So it's also the good people, you know what I'm saying? We rolling. Let me, uh, again, I really truly had, I didn't, I didn't feel like, the, all the news was pretty bad this week. Everything, I, I didn't have a single, the, 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 the woman who won the, the first million dollars of the great state of Ohio was given away. I thought that was kind of interesting, but at the same time, I didn't win that million dollars. Fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> that's true you did not win but all the other stories it's just like I'm just I'm good man I don't need that so you know what we gonna do we gonna just uh, well you know what I'm gonna talk about video games now then we'll do Amateur Asshole and then we'll wrap it up how about that you know what I'm saying well, I'll, I'll talk about video games ahead of Amateur Asshole uh, I am still continuing my adventures in Komorocho Tokyo Japan in uh, Judgment it's called Judge Eyes in Japan and, and it is uh it is so damn good, and I'm having such fun with it, and I kind of want to play it before I go to bed tonight. Might just do just that if we wrap this show up in the quick enough. <laughs> it's a it's a damn good game, and uh, I, I I I finally I finally got to the figured out who the mystery dude is, who the who the who the, who the murderer is, if you will, and that shit. I was like, I knew that motherfucker was dirty. I knew it. <laughs> and I felt good that I had solved that earlier in my mind. Just like, that motherfucker, something about him. And it turns out I was right. So that was, that was, that was actually good, good, to, good to notice. Now I'm doing the dating portion of the game because you can date people. And there's an achievement if you, get, if you date all of them and get them all to uh, express their love of you. And I'm oh, like, wow. that's dirty as fuck. But... At the same time, it means I'm just dating. I'm not in love with any of these. I, the one chick I want to date in that game is a busy, uh, a busy woman, and she uh, never has time to make dates for with me. And I'm like, damn it, that's fucked up, lady. <laughs> damn, you're in the virtual friend zone. <laughs> <laughs> she just, she true, she true, she actually, apparently, she actually likes me. She just, it really does like her job and bust her up. So you post. She a career woman, no kids. So you post to keep. So uh, the the the. the uh, the guide say just keep hitting her up and eventually she'll come around. I'm like, child, I guess these other women is hitting me up with all kinds of love. But the problem is one of them is like a 90 year old and the, again, the character you play is 35. I'm like that seems gross. I just went out on a second date with a 27 year old. I'm like, well, that's kind of that's more reasonable. And then the other lady you're supposed to date, I hadn't even got, I hadn't even gotten enough, I hadn't even finished the the precursor missions to get to date her yet. So does the 19 year old just make you feel so much more alive than other women? <laughs> no, in fact, I'm just like, what are y'all even in my mind? I'm like, what did you even go talk to this child about? <laughs> but yeah, y'all can be a figure it out, man. But uh, yeah, I am really on that shit. I, as I just showed the fellas, I have a mass effect legendary edition and I just put it in the steel book and the steel book arrived today. And uh, I have not even installed it yet. I love Mass Effect. I, I fuck with Bioware in general. Although I was never a Dragon Age man. That was Dan was a Dragon Age man. I was a Bi I was a you know what I'm saying Mass Effect guy because uh, I fuck with science fiction type shit. But uh, but like again, I haven't even have not even installed it yet. Uh, Vanessa's been continuing her Resident Evil Village run. It's been interesting to watch her play it. And watch her become a killer, a killer, killer. Like, whoo, you deadly now, lady. You over here murdering fools, and I love watching it. So that's been a, a delight. But other than that, I haven't been playing too much anything. I've been playing the same goddamn uh, solitaire game I, I've been playing for years and a little bit of a Bejeweled Stars. And again, I've been playing that for years. So, what level that's, are you that's, on, a, on Bejeweled? Bejeweled. Uh, let, me see, let me see. Bejeweled Stars on Bejeweled Stars. I am currently stuck at because it's always stuck at. <laughs> and in fact, if that, and that's, what's another thing about that is I've gotten all the constellations in Bejeweled Stars. 
which is so whatever. But I can't, so I can't even get any extra stuff. But I am at level seven hundred and twenty-four. Wow! And I am. I've never been able to move any any further past that. I was playing recently, um, a, a few months ago. I was playing one of the Angry Birds popping bubbles games, yeah. and I had um, got so far that they stopped putting numbers on the side of uh, like it, it was no more levels. Like you played all the games, you can un- uninstall this now. <laughs> Like you did it, okay? You did. It. I did the same thing with this uh this uh Age of Solitaire game. I had beaten all the levels, so now I just play it because I like playing Saw before I go to bed, you know. Yeah. So I just fuck around with that. But I've completed all the, all the little uh, areas if I can get that. To, yeah. yeah. Like I've done all those areas. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm I'm still playing my number block game. Um, I haven't been able to play anything on the PlayStation or anything lately. Um. I'm still and like um, at night. I'm still reading my book, so I've like I've been trying to put the phone down at night. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. I hear that. I told you I got that uh, that book and I was reading of uh, Fat Man from Outer Space. Yeah, if I, no, whatever that. Yeah, and that's just been it's been fun to read it and not remember it, damn near any of it. So that, that that has been interesting to read a book of that age. I just pulled uh pulled a book from a. Uh, Libby the other day that I have read before, but I'm like I wouldn't mind listening to it. That's an, that's been a fun thing. That's a, that's an interesting thing about memory because they say that it, listening to books is just like reading them because that's just how your brain processes the information. And my head is it's so real. Like I know that I have read the the, the the Thursday next series of book, read them all. You know, what I'm saying I've never listened to them, but in my mind they're in that same space where listening to books is at. So I find that interesting. So I'm I'm actually going to listen to that book. For the first time, and see what I think of uh, whatever voice actor they get to do the work and so forth. Yeah, so. it's it's this one guy who reads a lot of Stephen King books, and on the yeah. Libby app, you can go and you click on his name and listen to other books he's read. Which I that's dope. I like I like doing that because like I like this dude's voice. Um, yeah. Let me see what else he has to offer, and it works sometimes, and you know, but sometimes. You know, it is also the you know the richness of the author that brings that that character to life. Yeah, dig it. I dig it, man. Daniel, you you been I see you've been dropping in the war zone. You're still leveling up your guns, but uh, yeah, but I've been playing a lot. Um, me and the boys uh, got some wins this week. All right, got some dubs. I think we got about three wins. Nice. I, I actually told them today that I couldn't play much tonight. Uh. I ended up not playing with them at all. I, I was playing solo, fucking around a little bit before the show. But uh, I told them that I was going to talk about that on the show and that I was going to tell everybody that I carried the team. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, you're like I said from some from, from when I first met you, you was a Halo dude. So I I, I, I think you're you are a first person man. You can get out there and pop pop right. Uh, the thing is, though, like, Halo, it's a little... I would say Halo's a little easier... Yeah. Oh, for sure. ...than, than Call of Duty yeah. is, so it's been an adjustment. I've gotten better, but I'm not, like... I wouldn't say I'm good. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm working at it, you know, I'm... I've been playing... I practically play, like, after work, like, every night now, like... Because they had a, uh, Call of Duty group chat going... Yeah. ...that I got added to, so, like, now I have access to more people, like, to play with... So, um, and a lot of, like, a bunch of them are pretty good. Yeah. So, like, playing with them, I'm learning shit, and I'm getting more experience, and then I watch, like, with anything, man, I, I get hooked on it, and then I watch YouTube videos about it, I read about it, like, the thing that sucks about it, though, is, like, cheating in that game is so fucking rampant. Yeah. Um, we actually, like, lost the game, because, <laughs> uh, because the dude was, was using hacks. Like, we got down to the last circle. And it was like four players left or something. My buddy had the best position, like because the way it works is like the circle shrinks and shrinks and shrinks, mm-hmm. so it forces everyone together. So my buddy had the best position in the final circle behind this rock, and some fucking dude with a sniper rifle just no scopes him, like hip fire no scopes him from like forty meters away. Like, while he was behind the rock, like, the, the tiniest sliver of his fucking body was poking out from behind this rock, and the dude no scope sniper rifled him from 40 meters away, which is, like, a fucking impossible shot. Yeah. Like, when he watched the kill cam, 
It's because like th- there's hacks that like auto lock on your sh- your aim on people, so it's clear that that dude was like running hacks to like auto aim for him. Yeah, and it wasn't the first time like we've been cheated out of wins like that. Like there was another game where it's a similar situation. Like uh, me and two buddy, like that guy actually had died, but there was me and two other guys left, and it was so it was three v two. And then we, the three of us were behind a rock, and we had all just played it up, and we were getting ready to, like, run out. And then when I watched the kill cam, as we all died, like, in succession, like, right? Like, we all went to come out behind the rock, and then it was, like, my buddy Jack got popped, then my buddy Tom got popped, and then I got popped within, like, three seconds. Yeah. And then we watched the kill cam, and it was a fucking dude with a sniper rifle. He immediately locked onto Jack's head, killed him. Then he he let go of the zoom, and then immediately zoomed right back in on Tommy's head and killed him. Then let go of the zoom, and then immediately zoomed on my head and killed me. It was like three just auto locks right on our head like a heat-seeking missile. Yeah. Which is like fucking impossible. So we lost that game because of a cheater. But I guess like the, the issue is, from what I was told... And I don't know this to be factual. I didn't read about this, but this is what they were telling me. Supposedly, the company that made this game didn't like do a good job in development of making hacks not doable. Yeah. Because they didn't think the game would be that popular. They were just kind of putting it out there to put it out there to compete with like Fortnite and shit. And turns out that like someone who developed the game sold the software. They got a hold of the software and sold it on like the black market or something. So people were able to go into the code and develop hacks for it, which they were selling to people to to, to use online. How much is it? So like, I I don't know. I don't I know how to how to, I don't know how to go about finding how to purchase a Call of Duty hack, and not like I intend to anyway. But like, apparently there's like an estimate of like ten percent of the players are actively cheating in like every game or something. They they just announced recently that they have banned like half a million players. For cheating. So it's like, I mean, you've banned half a million players in a game that's like millions are playing. And it's like, uh, I just looked it up at, at Sky, uh, first on a, for, first Google search, Sky Cheats, Call of Duty Warzone hacks, uh, $13 in stock. Oh, yeah. It's see? worth it. So it's like, I don't, under, I don't understand the people who like go and do that shit. Like what? How, how can you like get enjoyment out of cheating in a game like that? Like, yeah. I understand like not being good at it and losing like can be frustrating, but then to just like go and and get these cheats and then like still not be good at the game, but you just win because you paid money to unlock some shit that like nobody else has. Like that's that's ridiculous, and I don't understand where you get enjoyment out of that. Uh, yeah, this is it's a, it, what this uh, site claims is a uh, fully undetected. Warzone cheats with decent aimbot aimbot functions, so aimbot and wall hacks and so forth. So on again, I'll put that in the chat. Yeah, they they can literally unlock where like it can show you on the map where the other players are. Yeah, and like so like you can shoot people through walls and they don't even know you're there. Like they like the auto locking thing is like if they put their cursor near you, it automatically snaps their cursor to your body. And so they don't even have to, like, aim to shoot. Like, it just does it. Like, it puts them right on you. Yeah. It's it's fucking ridiculous. Like, you go, like... Because those games, like, they're a grind, man. Like, uh, if, you're, if your team makes it near the end, you're playing for probably 25, 30 minutes. And, like, there's a lot of, like, you having to buy teammates back and strategy and knowing when to shift it in the next circle and when to post up in houses and when to engage and when to fall back. And then, like... You do all that work and you get to the very end and you just lose to a dude who spent $20 on some site to unlock some bullshit hacks. It's fucking disheartening. The, like I said, the fact that I just I can pull up with a simple Google search, just the option to do this, lets you know how rampant it really is. So that, And that just stinks and it just like takes you out of it. But then, like I said, you still manage to get some wins in. I'm glad y'all threw up some dubs, took care of business, so that's dope. Also, I'm just glad you're playing your Xbox. I, every time you pop on my phone, because I have the Xbox app, and it says, you know what I'm saying, Lunchbox is, on, is online, I'm like, good, glad to know that. <laughs> yeah, I think like it helps that like, I like it, but then I've got a group of people who are also excited about playing together, yeah. so it gives me more enjoyment to go on there and like 
like really grind it out and because like like on the weekends man like a bunch of us when we don't have anything going on like the one like uh last sunday yeah. i pl- i was on there for like seven straight wow. hours nice like tomorrow night after i get off work like i imagine because it's raining out like most most dudes and like a lot of these dudes now are married with kids and stuff too so it's like for them this is their hanging out with the boys yeah so like I imagine when I get off work tomorrow, I'll probably be playing tomorrow until like from the time I get off until maybe three or four o'clock in the morning. So that's 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 um, it's it's wild it's wilding out here. That's what it is, man. <laughs> um, but hey, that was our that was our little video game talk. You know what I'm saying we out there. You still Clash of Clans, of course. You know what I'm saying you just you said you you yeah, Clash like, Clans, yeah. and uh, I got Summoners War going on the tablet as we speak. Yeah. Uh, what's I gonna tell you? Uh. I don't know. I don't know how much you Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go Fest uh, tickets went up sales on sale today, uh, five bucks this year because it's the fifth anniversary of the show, of the game. So if you want to fuck around and do some shit, uh, it's uh, the weekend of July. It's Lily's birth, Lee's birthday, sixteenth, seventeenth, and eighteenth. July seventeenth and eighteenth is when it's going down. But like I said, you can buy you can buy tickets. For five bucks. So. Yeah, I uh, I'm so far out of the loop on all that shit. I like I was over at my mom's the one day. It was before my grandmother passed, and they're like, "Oh, did you get a shiny <laughs> Smeagol?" And I'm like, "I'm like, what the hell are you talking about?" And they're like, "Oh, it's a Smeagol event today." And my stepdad took my phone and literally tried to get a shiny Smeagol um, because my mom wanted one and she didn't get one on her phone. So I was like, "Just fucking take it." I'm like, "I don't care." <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know you could like, get a shiny one. I have. I have two Schmeagles. I don't have a shiny one. Yeah, I guess they had like a like a, a Schmeagle Day event or something where like you um you took the picture to make him pop up and like he would pop up twenty times or something. Yeah. So you had twenty shots to get him to be shiny or some shit like that. Nice, nice. I uh I, I don't I don't play it anywhere near like what we used to, but. I get in there every now and again and, and, and just pull some stuff. I, I, I play some, you know, beat some team rocket grunts or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I like. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just kind of lost interest like two years hey, ago. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like I said, and pl- like I won't delete the account or anything. I'm like, I still have the game on my phone. I just, I went from playing like all the time, like every day, to like I just don't care anymore. Yeah. So my man Chalfy still played it on the daily. So that's just what, how we get down to video games, but uh. Yeah, like every now and again, I'll get like a notification. It's like so and so has invited you to a remote raid, and I'm like, eh. So if you go long enough without playing, like not opening it at all, at this point it's gonna take a while because, like I said, you just had it, like I said, you had it open at your at your at your folks' house. Uh, th- like you can actually, they'll you can come back and they'll offer you like yeah, I don't know, basically trinkets to come back and play. Oh, I've gotten those emails. We're like, you haven't played in a while. Yeah. Come back and we'll give you this. Yeah. And I'm just like. Eh. <laughs> you can keep your raid pass and your ten pokeballs. Oh my gosh! But uh, each week, my folk, we uh, take a walk over to the mean streets of Reddit and take a peek at uh, one of our favorite little sections of that uh, that site, and that is R slash M I the asshole. Well, step my most favorite. My most favorite is the one with the OnlyFans leaks, but. <laughs> Well, this uh, first one, uh, you know, I pull a selection. I've, I still have the ones we have we, that we've had these last few weeks, so I have some that 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 were still good. And then box, I sent one to the Twitter today. Yeah. And then box, of course, sent this one today that has already been deleted oh, no. from the from the page. But of course, if you get it off of Twitter, they are good with the screenshots. So I have the screenshots right here. So the one we definitely will be reading is that one. Of course, is Emma the asshole for refusing to be my friend's baby's grand godfather. After I was given a legally binding contract to sign with requirements attached. It's like it's too good to not read that one. I read the title and I was like, okay, I'm hoping for the best on this one because it is very mm. thorough. Yeah, I, st- I, st- I still have Emma the asshole for uh, being upset with my husband for using my bonus on him. My bonus on him. Emma the asshole for refusing to take my sister and her kids in unless her husband stays out. <laughs> Only reason I guess the only reason I keep keeping that one is like I've read a little bit of that and that shit is a hitter. Am the asshole for not checking my mail more often and causing my neighbor to miss out on something time sensitive? And uh the hell? That, that is all I have. I, I know, I know. So uh any of the others uh besides the one we're definitely gonna read, uh, the, the one from uh, Twitter earlier that uh 
the scratchy itch. Mm, maybe the one about the uh, keeping the, the husband out, but uh, letting the kids in. Fair enough. Well, let's start with the one that Box sent us earlier, and that is, am I the asshole for refusing to be my friend's baby's godfather after I was given a legally binding contract to sign with requirements? Short story is, my wife is from another country, and we met a, met a couple in which the husband, the husband's wife is from the same country. We are great friends, almost nine years now. Done a lot together. Best friends, hands down. The husband has no family alive slash that talks to him. The wife obviously only has the husband as her family as her family here in the U.S. Well, the wife is pregnant with a baby girl. For sake of conversation, we'll call her Jane. The husband asked me if I could be Jane's godfather. To note, they are Catholic. I was honored. My friend was thrilled. The next day, he dropped off an envelope with some papers in it. After he left... I took a look. I took after he left. I looked and it was a legal contract that I needed to sign in order to be the godfather. Obviously, I thought this is a bit oh, a bit overboard, but it gave I gave it a read anyways. It has many things I must do as a godfather, such as I must go to every Catholic event in which Jane attends, such as christening, confession, confirmation, etc., which I know are normal events for a Catholic child's life. Not a big deal. Then we got into ridiculous things. I have to consider becoming Catholic. Hmm. I must I must give a gift of at least five hundred dollars for each of these events, and on birthday slash Christmas gifts must be cash only and over two hundred fifty dollars. No, thank you. <laughs> oh no! It, oh no! It gets worse. I'm expected to save at least twenty five thousand dollars over Jane's eighteen years and set it aside for Jane's future college tuition. Her parents will provide the rest. Seriously. The list goes on to include various things such as being willing to cancel any plans I have if they need me to watch Jane or if they go on vacation. Apparently Jane can't go. Many of the other things on this list were silly or not a big deal, like spending time with her once a week. I called my friend and said it was nothing personal, but there was no way I would sign it. He got mad and said (laughs) I'm the only family they got. And I should be thankful and honored to be asked. I told him I was honored, but the rules were extreme and ridiculous, especially when it comes to money involved. He brought up that he knows I'm a godfather to a niece I have, and I send her money, which I do. I give her $100 a year. In her country, that's a ton of money. I told him there's a big difference between 100 and tens of thousands of dollars over 18 years. He essentially told me that he thought I, I was a good guy, but it was apparent I was selfish. He has since blocked my number and my email. My wife has too. His wife has too, forgive me. Mind you, his wife and mine talk nearly every day. Since he ended things, I shredded the papers he gave me and left them in a bag and put it in his mailbox, Petty. For him and and telling him it was a shame he ruined a friendship over ridiculous demands. I told him I forgive him regardless. Lastly, I will note together this couple makes almost $200,000 a year. My wife and I make not even $35,000 a year. So I'm not an asshole for refusing to be Jane's godfather. Add an info below. I should add that while I don't know what the wife's involvement, involvement in the contract was, many people that come from her country tend to be married to, let's say, wealthier men here. So they tend to live lavish lives and spend a lot on their kids. Some tend to also... Uh, also to he also wrote also tend to also some tend to also Tom look down on small gifts. I'm going to maybe go with to me is what he was meant to write. For example, if you don't have a Michael Kors purse, they judge you. Oh. So maybe the money thing was his wife's idea. If someone wants to spend a ton of money, that's up to them. But I don't want to spend a ton of money on a child that isn't even mine, at least not 25 K. Man, this really kept going. Edit. Holy crap, this blew up over a matter of hours. I'll try to respond as much as I can to add some more info based on some responses. I honestly thought the contract was some kind of prank at first. As I continued reading, it became clear it was serious. Some still ask what country our wives are from. 
the Philippines. Oh. So obvious. So obvious. <laughs> to be clear, <laughs> not every Filipino is the same, just as with any country and its people. The, though, as stated, I don't know the, know the wife's involvement in the contract. Shredding the papers and leaving it for her husband was probably not the best move. I told you it's petty. But it was the heat <laughs> it was the heat of the moment thing. I'd still be the godfather of the acts without the rules. But whether or not they will ever talk to us again is up in the air. Though I don't know if I want to be friends with people who flip so quick, especially with such crazy demands. Thankfully they don't use Reddit. So I don't have to worry about them seeing this. Edit again. I've learned a lot from being a god uh, uh, about how being a godparent works from the Catholic side of things. Very interesting. Despite my family being Catholic, well, not my parents. I never, I never how it. This is what they wrote. I never how it worked fully. Such as you are supposed to be Catholic in order to be a godparent. I do not. I do think it would be awkward to teach a child, given I am not Catholic. I know my parents are godparents to some kids, all of which are Catholic. I think for they for they just use it as a title of out of niceness. In my mom's case, she's a godmother to her friend's daughter because the only aunt she had was killed. So it just leaves my mom as her as the aunt. Jesus Christ. Edit yet again. To note, not all Filipinas are like this. There are always bad people no matter where you're from. Also, no, I don't know for sure if the wife had anything. Why do you keep saying that, bruv? Anyway, that is that. Again, it got deleted from Reddit, but it might have been deleted at the behest of the uh, at, at, of the guy. Cause sometimes that goes down. Funny thing. I'm my little brother's, my youngest brother's step, our godfather, yeah. and I'm not Catholic. My mom lied oh. to the church. Oh my god! I don't even know what to do with that. <laughs> yeah, she's like, oh, just tell if they ask, just tell them you're Catholic. I'm like, okay, I don't care. <laughs> well, you're not. You went to Catholic school for uh, for a good chunk of your little life, didn't you, man? Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not baptized. I know. Man, I know. <laughs> yeah, that's why my my grandmother had to pay extra money to Catholic schools so they would take my heathen ass. Oh my god! Uh, like I said, it's it's been deleted, so there's no real uh, whatever. Basically, no way he seems to think he's an asshole. They they have like like he said they have explained how uh, ca- ca- Catholic uh, godparent them works, so it is kind of involved, but usually I guess not that involved where numbers is getting laid out like that. So that's wild for the night. Yeah, if my mom had told me that I needed to put twenty five k away from my little brother's college in order to be his godfather, I would have told her to kick rocks. <laughs> Yeah, that 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 would have that would have been that. Holy shit! The, the whole thing to me just like I just don't understand where people think it's okay to just be so demanding of other people in that regard. Like a contract where you agree to all these terms, like it feels like they're holding you up, like 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 it's like a stick up or something. Yeah, I'm like bro, you're not getting me for that though. Suck it up, champ. Like who? And, and like people like us, like who the fuck has that kind of money laying around? Nobody, <laughs> and, and nobody wears Michael Kors purses anymore. <laughs> I always thought Michael Kors was like a Coles type of thing, Same. but I don't know shit about Same. purses. Yeah. I didn't realize it was a brand of uh, some of, of renown. Uh, I mean, it is, but when you when, uh, when he said what country, I understood why. They're a little bit behind us. Oof. Again, that was that was a whatever one. Uh, as for the other one, let me close these other tabs. Emma the asshole for refusing to take my sister and her kids in unless her husband stays out. Uh I guess grammar is the first word here, so maybe they don't they they don't feel their grammar is hitting. So, my female thirty two father passed away two years ago. He left me and my half sister. We both have different moms, same dad. Inheritance that we that was split that was equally split between me and her. My sister spent her inheritance money in just a few months. She's a stay-at-home mom with two kids and always had financial hardships. I haven't touched my inheritance money. 
I live in an apartment that I inherited from my biological mom in 2016. My sister sat me down to talk about her and her husband's current situation. She said her husband can no longer pay rent and they need a place to stay. I asked for the time to think since me and her husband don't get along. She said it was okay. The next day, she showed up with her tone completely changed. She said her husband thinks I'm being manipulative by taking time to think about letting them come and that my apartment is an inheritance and she's my sister. <laughs> Therefore, I, sh I should share it with her and the kids. She said her husband also says that if I wasn't going to let my sister share the apartment, then I should give her my half of my dad's inheritance, saying it's not fair since my sister doesn't work, has two kids, and will soon be homeless. While I have a paying job, no kids, and a whole apartment to myself. I was speechless. I opened the argument by saying the apartment was for my mom, and my mom never related to my half-sister, so she has no right to her inheritance. Also, she already had her half of dad's inheritance, so she can't touch mine, just because her husband thinks so. She started crying, telling me to think about my nephews. Again, parroted her husband's words, saying, I have two options. I either let them move in or give them support money from my inheritance. I said that she and the kids can move in, but her husband, no. He's banned from my place. She pitched a fit, saying she can't believe I wanted to keep their the kid's father away from them, and I'm the reason they'll be homeless for refusing. But I flipped out and said that I'm not. But it's her deadbeat of a husband that she keeps repeating his nasty words instead of holding him accountable for the shitty situation they're in. I told her I won't continue to speak to her since her husband speaks for her. She left after the blow up. Days later, I discussed with my stepmom and she said she couldn't believe I cut contact with my sister only for asking for help and that I needed to see her soon and arrange for one of the two options to be considered. Reminding me that innocent kids are involved, if my brother-in-law can be rude to me, but I'm standing my ground on letting him into my place after what he said. Am I the asshole? My sister is younger than me. She's 26 and her kids are 2 and 5. I love my sister. I have a good relationship with her and the kids and stepmom for years. I don't want this to ruin it now. Edit. Because I see the question being asked, my stepmom is now living with her family and brother-in-law has been in, con in no contact with them. So it's, unlike I so it's unlikely to let them move with them. Edit two. Look, I love my sister and my nephews so much. I treat my nephew as my own kids and I did help in the past because I know my sister and my nephews are struggling. However, I'm quite upset because of how she talked to me but I know that it was her husband who was talking to me that day, not her, since she kept repeating his words. Is this person an asshole? Everybody's an asshole. <laughs> no, no, everyone has. I don't, everyone has an asshole. I don't think. I don't think so. <laughs> I, I kind of feel like it, it's some. Um, I mean, she said from the beginning, her and the dude didn't get along. So, I mean. I don't know. It's just some some. It was some automatic animosity there. Like, what the old boy do from the beginning for y'all not to begin alone? They never really explained that. But I don't know. I just think everybody's a asshole in this situation. I I, I got to disagree with you, homeboy. I got to yeah. disagree. She has an inheritance from her father, of which she has not spent. She has an inheritance from her mother, who is not related to this uh, stepsister. I mean, this half sister of hers. And she is not responsible for this woman or this woman's children. And uh, I agree with all that. It is it is wild as fuck for her man to be like, you should come off your apartment and or all the money your daddy gave uh, gave you because we broke. I agree with that. That's but that's madness to me. But it just seems like her tone is kind of like, I don't know. I just don't. Well, I, I just have to assume if this dude's acting like this on this situation, he's probably like this all the time, which is probably why they don't get along. But grand, like I, I'm assuming, yeah. I don't know. But I would say I think that's a safe assumption. So I'm not holding it against her that she's like going into this like fuck that dude because he's the one who probably put them in this situation to begin with. 
What in the fuck is going on? Popping? It did sound like it was licking rounds. I don't know what the fuck that was. It sounded like gunfire from from way over here in my neck of the woods listening via headphones. And your mic pick it up real clear. Yeah, because it went pop. (laughs) Pop, pop, pop. Pop. Yeah. Pop, pop, pop. It had a cadence cadence that was not firework like. Yeah, it was was gun hole sideways, it sounded like. You guys had the benefit of like being able to hear the noise coming in from my speakers to your headphones, yeah. whereas like I had to hear it over my headphones, so it was like real muffled for yeah. me. All right, well, I guess there's maybe a dead body around you me right now. A dead body. See a dead body. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, this person is okay. Make 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 this woman an asshole to me. I guess. And what, what is what is uh? I don't know. It's just her tone. I don't like. I I don't um. I don't think that the um. I think that the other family is an asshole. The husband definitely an asshole. Um. But at the same time, like, it, there's there there is another common ground you can come up with. Like um. It's it's no use in. Like stupid down to his level, but mm. that's just my opinion. But like, I just feel like her family's clearly trying to strong arm her. Yeah. Which like I don't I, think I is don't right. Think, oh, okay, but in, in my mind, how do I say this? Something is going on where the rest of the family is like something's going, something else is going on for everybody else to be on the asshole side. <laughs> you know, you see what I mean. But it's not. It's not. But it's not everybody else. It is the stepmom who is her sister's mom. So of course, she gonna be on sure. her team. And it's her husband. That's it. Well, <laughs> sure. I still think everybody's an asshole. It might not. It might not be. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't like. I don't like her snarky tone. I'll, I'll, I'll allow for it, but of course that is what Emma's asshole is. You go in there and you read, you know, so you you write somebody and you read them the riot act and be like, ain't nobody writing in good terms here, you know what I'm saying? In most situations, it's gonna be smoke. This motherfucker, that's what it is, you know what I'm saying? Whack shit. But I would not be on smoke. Uh, yeah, you can come live with me, but fuck your husband. That You can't do that. That's bullshit. I will out there. There is some ass holiness. You can just be like, nah, none of y'all coming to this motherfucker. Yeah, all all, all <laughs> of it just seems to stink to me. Something's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm. You, well, like you got to figure though. Like she was inviting them into into her home, right? Yeah. Who want? Like that's her place of peace. Like if you don't get along with this dude and you feel like he's fucking up the situation, to willingly invite him in your home. Because the problem is too, if you invite them in with like squatters rights and all that. It be it could end up being a fucking nightmare oh, yeah. to try and get yeah. them out. Yep. So like her not wanting him in there, you know, it could be beneficial to her in the long run because then she avoids that headache, baby. And him trying to force the issue of you should you should uh, you you should come up off either your inheritance or that apartment means he probably knows something. It's probably some kind of squatters rules, and he probably <laughs> are aware of them. And like that's why he's trying I'm to a, push that I'm narrative. I'm crafty you know what I'm asshole. <laughs> yeah. Well, like shit, they ran that in um, uh, Silicon Valley. Like the the one dude rented out his apartment is like an Airbnb, and because the people were there for so long, they just ended up staying in there and they couldn't That's get rid of it. HBO. I forgot. I, I might watch that. Uh, Finish watching that. I stopped and I, I could pick that back up now. Thanks. Well, there you go. Thanks, Dan. It's a good show. You're not. A, you're not. A, you're <laughs> no not. Problem. I'm happy to help. Not in this instance. Well, that is where we, of course, close out Am I the Asshole? And also where we close out the show for this week. You know what it is. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share to the show wherever possible. That includes YouTube, Twitch, Twitter. Uh, if you'd like to support the show financially and have a few bucks to toss our way. A few shillings. You you know what I'm saying. You can join us over on our Patreon. We're members at the $5 and above tier. Get extra content each month and early access to new shows. We also have merch available over on tpublic.com slash user stash stage crunchy and milk all one word. Uh, there's a sale going on right now. It's a 72 hour sale, which is longer than normal. 
but still won't be uh, happening by the time you hear this episode. But I will probably tweet about it in the various social uh, channels. Are you gonna get that so, mug this time? <laughs> maybe, maybe you should. But there you go. We'll 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 see we'll see how this goes. Uh, feel free. Let's call 216-302-8763. That's 216-302-8pod. We would certainly love to hear from you. That was what we lost from last week's episode. Oh, that voicemail? I mean, I have the voicemail. I just don't yeah. want to play it. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> uh, uh, we, uh, uh, you know, our man William Kent hit us up on the Twitters a little bit ago. Let me go read you his tweet. Because I thought it was a nice tweet. He uh, just showed us some love. Uh, he said, great anniversary episode. Hit, hit, it hit close. Here's the eight more years. And, of course, safe travels to the Silver Coke Key. So, props. They actually, they actually know each other. I'm not mistaken. I recall that uh, she put him on to the yes. show. So, that's that's what that is. So, uh, that's what's up, people. Uh, that's my man, uh, Tatum216. Bang, bang. Dallas Mavericks. That's uh, Lushbox2099. In the building. Let me take a quick look at these scores. The Lakers are up by nearly 20 points. The Trailblazers are down by five points. And the Bucks, of course, stomped a mud hole in the heat. Uh, I'm going to tell you that was 113 to 84. The Bucks looking like they want that chip this year. We'll see how we'll see how that all plays out. Uh, our missing man is the real ODP. Uh, shoot him some love uh, over in these uh, Twitter streets if you are so inclined. Uh, and I am the Internet's Tayro 713. You've just been podcasting to it. I know you loved it. At least a tip. Oh, don't cancel Peace. me. Don't cancel me. <laughs> <laughs> I love having you. You're my 